<sighs> so, getting Star Trek Voyager Elite Force working on stream was not the easiest thing. Not the easiest thing. First, finding the game. Because uh, it's not on Steam and it's not on GOG. And I didn't want to go through other means. I had to go in my garage. And I had to find the actual discs. Oh, I was going to show off the comic book. It came with a comic book, but like, so I found my actual Voyager disc. Here's the CD code. There you go. Enjoy that. That's the expansion pack. Then like, here's the normal one. Star Trek Elite Force. Wait, like that ish. There, there's my CD key. There you go. Enjoy that. Have fun playing Star Trek Elite Force. I'll show the, um, whatchamacallit, the, um, uh, comic book later. Oh, and I also bought this at work. For anyone who cares. Apparently it's the 1980s turtle van. I'm actually kind of impressed by it. I saw it. I was like, why is this here? I'll get it. Alright. Now to get this game working. So since you can't alt tab out of it, I had to do the sound balance in OBS. So hopefully the game is not too loud nor too, uh, too soft. But we'll see. It's probably way too loud. I don't know. I have no idea. Welcome to Voyager Elkar's menu system. I didn't want to skip the thing. I just wanted to raise my volume level. I'm going to start it again and see what the intro looks like. It's probably just the Paramount intro. Logging off Elkar's menu system. There's also stuff going on in this menu. But I'll get to that when we get to it. So let me let me start the game up again. Got the Activision logo. Alright, that's showing up on stream. That's good to know. There's Paramount. I can't press any buttons or it'll skip this intro. Unless it's just the Paramount thing. Okay. And I'm looking at the volume levels on OBS. It's looking like it's a little on the loud ass side. Welcome to Voyager. Empire's That's it. That's the system. intro. All right, I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit more. This is one of those things I have to eyeball. Logging off Elcar's menu system. How annoying, huh? That also means I gotta like mess with my volume too. All right, so I lowered it by 5 point db I don't want to lower it anymore but I don't know I'm thinking that that should be good enough The thing is I won't be able to tell until I watch the playback So Welcome to Voyager Elcar's menu system or until someone tells me if it's too loud or not loud enough. But then again, it hasn't, um... Usually by now, three minutes into a stream, it starts to tell me that I'm live in my chat. And it hasn't done that. I'm gonna look at some of the stuff here. So you can mess around with the menu. You can check out Borg Space. It doesn't give too much information, just like when they were first contacted. Stuff like that. Dominion. You can see their logo. Ionian Artificial, oh. Oh, that's... wait. Hydran into Bajoran Wormhole, okay, so here's the other, here's the other part. There's the Ferengi Alliance. Cardassia. Federation. Kleongs, this is all the Alpha Quadrant stuff. Romulans. Beta Quadrant. Delta Quadrant, Alpha Quadrant, Gamma Quadrant, Galactic Core. So yeah, you know, most of the stuff, and where Voyager is, <laughs> I guess. Oh, you can also check Captain out the- Catherine Oh Jane. my god. Get all this data here. Doctorate on quantum cosmology. I might check some of this out, Torres. like, later. You can see their Quake 3, uh, models. Captain Catherine Jane, Commander Chakotay. Chakotay. Commander Tuvok! Lieutenant Commander Tuvok. Oh, we got Hazard Team. 
Oh, they don't get portraits. Oh, they do. Sadlos. These guys were never in the show, as Crewman far as Elizabeth I know. Laird. Like at all. Alright. I don't know, this is weird. Usually, uh, I get a notification that I'm live. I'm gonna check real quick. I know I've wasted five minutes without doing anything, but that's, that's what happens when you stream a game this old. Check real quick. It should be live. Oh, it says I'm live. Alright, okay. It says I'm live. What's up? What's up, Never Conquer? Hey, tell me if the volume's way too loud. What's up, Silent Chain? Or not loud enough. This game is a bitch. Here, I'll, I'll click on random names. Emergency medical hologram. Hey, look, look at Robert Picardo in the, uh, in, <laughs> in Quake 3. Oh my goodness. That's a good one. Oh, seven and nine. Seven we gotta check her nine. out. Oh wow. Well, I. Neelix. Oh man, Neelix looks great. <laughs> he looks fantastic. He looks nothing like Robert Picardo. <laughs> Emergency medical hologram. He kind of looks like him in Gremlins too, a little bit. <laughs> Neelix. Neelix. Oh, man. Who haven't I done? I did. I did Ensign Paris, Tom right? Paris. Ah, uh, Paris looks okay. Torres. Lieutenant Belana Torres. Mm -hmm. Chicote. Commander Chicote. <laughs> he looks so debonair. <laughs> oh my goodness. I could read this crap, but you know, that's what the Star Trek wiki's for. All right, how's the volume? Is the volume all right? Is it not loud enough? I can't tell. Neelix, seven of nine. Emergency medical hologram. Like the little bar in what's it called the uh, the OBS mixer is telling me like it's I don't know how to read it because I lowered the the uh, the volume on it right but I don't think it like I th there's like another here. bar with it God because I can't alt tab out of this game you know how annoying that is Kim looks nothing like Kim nothing at all Ensign Tom Paris Lieutenant Belana Torres Lieutenant Commander Tuvok. They did get the voice though for the uh they got all the all the actors to do voice acting as well as the actor um the uh the voice actress for the uh computer so that's that's a nice touch. All right, we're just going to start the game. I'm going to double check. You can also virtually tour Voyager. There's some cool mods, but I we'll do that later. At one point I'm going to go and back and play like Jedi Knight and do some of the mods for that. Um this is the best it can be. 1280 by 1024 like so I'm running it at like arguably the best graphics you can run this thing on I didn't turn on 3d sound though because of what happened with Jedi Outcast I feel like 3d sounds a little goofy in these games uh, and everything else looks about right that crosshair that crosshair is quake 3 to the max what are these squiggly lines for? I don't know. That's like system shock. They're just there. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna go with challenging. Uh, we'll be male, and we'll engage. Warp core startup. All right. God, hopefully it's not too loud for me on my end. See, because normally I use the Once Windows Volume Mixer. Oh, hold on. 5.6. The USS Voyager was transported beyond our control. Seventy thousand light years. No, this is the, the game. To the Delta Quadrant. There, without aid from Starfleet, we began our seventy-year journey home. In our numerous encounters, we came into contact with many dangerous and violent species. Having a limited crew with no chance of reinforcements. We determined that we needed a specialized team to handle the more dangerous situations. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite force of security personnel named the Hazard team. Which we never see Edson in the show. Monroe is second in command of this uniquely trained team. Equipped with Seven of Nine's experimental anti-Borg weapon, the Infinity Modulator, the Hazard team has beamed to a Borg cube on a dangerous mission. However, the team was quickly overwhelmed, and the iMod is now in the hands of the Borg. Not the iMod! Separated from the rest, Monroe is attempting to rescue the team. Jerry Ryan, everyone. 
rendered in Quake 3. In gorgeous Quake 3 graphics. Here we go. Oh my god. Beautiful. Look at these projected shadows. We're really pushing it here. Those facial animations. Mr. Monroe, we have isolated your team members' life signs. They appear to be trapped in the tertiary power modulation chamber. Tertiary at any cost. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Tertiary what? So I think the voice actor for this guy is the same guy from Jedi Knight. Like, um, was it hit mission key? What is the mission key? Mission objectives oh. and tactical information. I see. Review it now before proceeding. Commander Tubok. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's Borg Junction, all right. What? What? Distribution node? Is that important? Don't mind me, not a threat! Um... Shooting and destroying will deactivate green force fields. Okay. Oh no, I must comply! Plasma filter. You know, another great, uh, game is, is Tron Legacy. I have that as well. Weapon energy terminal. How do I charge my weapon? Not that button. Uh, there's a secondary fire? No. Of course, right mouse button is move forward. What the fuck? An alt is secondary. Oh, hold on. We got it. Oh, look at this. Power converter used to convert alien energy into a source. Oh, wow. Passive active scanners. Look at this. We actually get to know what this crap does. Though, a shame that we have this terrible sound effect going on. There we go. <laughs> Multi-phasic wave generators. Oh, is that what those shoulder thingies are? Cool. But what does that do? Use to disrupt lock-ons. Oh, I see. So I can't be transported. Directional logistics. So like a watch. Energy pack, transporter buffer, equipment pouch. That Oh, that's where I keep all my equipment, huh? Is this little pouch? Alright, either way, we gotta we gotta change some stuff here. This is this is awful. Yeah, what is alt attack alt? Use a space? <laughs> I'll keep. Uh, well, check it out. Check out. Look up. Here's look down. <laughs> look at <that. laughs> I'm like, I like how the character animates while I do it. <laughs> oh man. All right. Either way, this needs to be right. There we go, mouse two. Okay. What, what's my walk? What's my back pedal? Look at that. That's a great back pedal. Shoulders straight, head forward. Turn left, turn right. Oh, that's a great run. Step left. Oh, that's intimidating. Sidestep turn, I don't know. Up jump. Down crouch. Okay, his crouch actually looks all right. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. The pouch, it, it like, um, it transports stuff or turns stuff like smaller, basically. You know, it's like super tech. Oh, there's the save menu. Instant save. Now let's make that like F9. Because that won't get confusing. Other options. Always run. Let's turn that on. Let's turn off auto switch weapons. Okay. Let's test out my save. Okay, cool. So spacebar, right? Is C crouch? All right, good. Spacebar, man. All right, we need we need to change that right now. Actually, uh, movement. What was it? This one? Okay, U should be E, and then jump should be spacebar. All right, okay, and I'll just change it as I go. Tertiary. We are the Borg. We are easily defeated by, uh, viruses. We have no firewall. We are Borg. Distribution node. You will be- Oh my god, I'm being assimilated! Get Borg! Yeah, adapt that! Oh shit, okay, they adapted. Don't worry, I got one of these. Oh, this thing recharges. Check it out. It's, it has infinite ammo. Yeah, this game was like... I mean, this was, what, 2000? 
I have the, I have the, like, CD case. But yeah, it's very early, like, one of the first Quake 3 games. Quake 3 engine games. The movement is, is extremely fast. Like, goofy fast, man. Like, look at this. Like, it's faster than Jedi Knight. Woo! Also, look, you can see the projected shadow bug. Like, when I, like, um, like here, see how it doesn't, like, conform to the geometry? Which is probably why Raven Software took out projected shadows and Jedi Outcasts and Soldier of Fortune. Because look at that. Maybe I should turn off projected shadows. It looks, it looks wonky as shit. Light flares, can I not turn it off? Are we stuck with those shadows? <laughs> We're stuck with those shadows. Yep. All right, I don't know the console command, so it's just how it is. Hey, thank you, Captain Zabu. <laughs> hey, just be glad I didn't find the- I have the comic book! This game came with the comic book. I'll show it next time. It's in the garage. I just don't want to go get it. I'll, I'll try to do it uh, next time I stream this. Can you guys hear all the beeps and boops? All that beeping and booping out there? Hear that stuff? Look at that. You can? Alright, good. Uh, let's go over here. Gotta get immersed in the beeping and the booping. Monroe! My savior! Get the eye on. It's on that table! No! What the hell? Oh, I'll just grab the eye mod, the infinite infinity modulator. So this this immediately cancels out the Borg's adaptation, huh? Alright. Well not when I have the eye mod apparently. This thing just like destroys you guys, huh? Woo! Look at this! It's like, they didn't even bother to make this, like, like, realistic movement. They were like, nah, this is Quake 3 as fuck. We're playing it. Like, yeah. Thanks, Monroe. Let's go. Alright, square head. Health and energy. Oh, they did get the Half-Life uh, health and energy terminals and, and that. Where are we going? Dude. Hold on. I know I keep going in here, but you know, when you first run a game, this is what it's like. Get some of that classic Voyager Star Trek music. What do you think? That'll be you one day. Oh, well, you're fucked. Thanks, Monroe. Get Odell back to the ship. What do you mean? No, I need you guys! Pussies! Am I the only one with the eye mod? Alright, well, I guess he could, it's pointless to shoot him. You might as well go melee. Org, that sounds Swedish. I'm ready for sure, leave. Or is it a psychological warfare trying to break? I think they believe it. It's just that no one t should tell the Borg how easily they are resisted. What's up, Nocturne? Hey, blue force field? I don't see a dis note here. Look at that! Look at that! Lip flaps. Damn. We know we're in the year 2000 when your character models have lip flaps and eye blinks. Oh wow, it's this game spoils us. Should we just blow this up? I like how scientific we are. Blue forest fields? I've never seen that before. Uh, I'd come with you if I had an eye mod, but uh what say I stay here? Yeah, you're right, stay up there so you can get killed. That's not a thing. This is a thing. Hey Monroe, if you're not back in five minutes, I'm not going in after you. That's good to know. Next time I won't save you from the Borg. 
and we'll be completely even. Plasma filters. Here, let's use let's use the phaser. Oh shit! He was about to say what the fuck, but he realized he's in Star Trek Voyager and not Star Trek Picard. Oh god. I do like how they, uh, they, like, short out. Also, it makes sense why the bodies disappear here, so I'll allow it. I mean, the Borg actually do retrieve their dead, so... That is within canon. That's what you guys get for having no projectile weapons. Oh, good. Incursion. So, I remember this game actually being, like, really frantic. Like, stupidly frantic. What's up, Colin? How are you doing? Like... Like, with the player speed and stuff... And the amount of enemies you have to fight, like, this game gets kind of, like, ridiculous in its shooting. It's kind of like Soldier of Fortune 1. Reminds me, at some point I gotta play, uh, what's it called? Quake 4, because Raven made that as well. What's up? Oh, nice. Nice shooting there. Now I can't get across the bridge. Sir, I was hit. The Borg took the team through there. Mm -hmm. Out, Chang. You've done all you can. I saw it. The Borg had an anti- No, apparently we made this weapon. The infinite, like, because it infinitely modulates our, our blast. Am I supposed to do some crude platforming? Oh god, I am, aren't I? I'm saving then. We're just gonna stand here, we're just gonna wait. I'm gonna play with my phaser. Look at that. Oh. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, that's right, it's a rail gun. You think you guys didn't think of that, huh? The poor grip. Uh oh, that's right. I gotta ride this little This thing's very uh very important to board cube design, whatever this thing is that I'm on. We can do the robot with the best of them. Oh god. Nano machines. All I need I have the high ground board. You have no means of attacking me from down there. Hey, remember the last episodes of Voyager where Voyager is just one-shotting board cubes? Like it just one-shots them to death? Oh god, I keep thinking that that's... I'm so used to that being the use button from Jedi Outcast, the old button. See, unlike Jedi Outcast, I have no force power, so that means I can bind more buttons to, like, you know, normal stuff.
I might as well just kill him now. Hey, any Ichim fans out there? Of course not. No one likes Ichim. I feel like they reused this texture in Jedi Outcast. I don't know. At least this column. Hey, what's up, Sir Aurora? Oh, you're watching in the old school res? Okay, then that'll then it'll be just like an episode of Star Trek Voyager. Um, how am I supposed to get over there? Is it this thing? Is this a thing? No. Alright, well this might be important. This yeah, this looks like I gotta get on the top of it. Uh, this was on... I, was this on console? If it was, it probably was Xbox. I mean, I'm playing the PC version. I, I don't know if it was on GameCube, but I'm. it might have been on PS2, actually. It might not even be Xbox or GameCube. I know that Joe from GameSack did a review of it, and for whatever reason, he only played the Deathmatch version of it. Because he only had the Deathmatch disc from whatever, like, um, what's it called? Uh, got here. Rescue your teammate. From whatever, like, bargain bin store he bought the used disc from. Oh, wait, are you a Bolian? I don't rescue Bolians. I'm sorry. See if you can locate the control console for the force field. No, no, he's a filthy Bolian. I don't want to rescue him. Fuck him. Like, that's not a Bolian. That's a Tellarite. No, that's not a Tellarite. Actually, you know what? I could find out right now what the fuck he is. Oh, damn it. It's not here. Look, there's a button for screenshot. Why? What did they do to you? They borged him. All right, fine. I'll rescue the bull here. Hey, uh, hey, hey, be careful. I electrocute him. Man, Monroe looks like your typical first-person shooter protagonist, doesn't he? He's like square-jawed. Could have used the tricorder, but hey, whatever. Not as good as the Barkley simulation. What was I supposed to do? Oh, here we go. There's some tubocking. You are all terrible. Mr. Monroe, your tactical approach was, shall we say, tactless. All right, hazard team, report to debriefing. Nice going, Monroe. <laughs> I like how they Sir, actually got. If I may. How was I supposed to know the panel would explode? That point you shot a panel on an alien ship. Given situation is not as predictable as you might desire. Your reckless decision has caused the death of you and your teammates. I hope you can live with that. And you have failed in my eyes. Monroe shot himself and later in his quarters. Standard hazard team procedures. You may have survived the simulation and achieved your mission objectives. Yes, sir. I love this dressing down from Tuvok. Speak freely, Ensign. Oh, uh, I think you can shove your procedures up your ass. I served on the Excelsior, Ensign. With all due respect, sir, I don't think procedure would have mattered. There wasn't any way I could have possibly rescued them. Someday, Mr. Monroe, you may be called upon to do the impossible. Consider this to be your personal Kobayashi Maru. Hey, Kobayashi Maru's overrated. All hands to battle stations. Computer, reroute turbo lift to the bridge. Okay, on hindsight, I'm gonna have to turn down the music. Oh, look, we get CGI space battles? Oh, it's just like the show now. Status. Look at her hair. Hey, they got the bridge pretty well. I mean, like, that looks accurate. What happened? We responded to a distress signal from a derelict vessel and it opened fire. Tuvok, they don't respond to hails. Maybe we need to send a clearer message. 
target their weapon systems and disable them. Phasers. Direct hit. Phasers had no discernible effect. We are fucked, Captain. Half shields are down, Captain. Rerouting auxiliary power to the shields. Just like today was a bad day to quit coffee. No. You know, I gotta check out Bridge Crew, but it's is, is it VR only? Oh, we blew the shit out of that. Yeah. Oh damn, never mind. Let me guess we're lost again. We got double lost. Just happened. Emotionally, I am damaged, though. We seem to have been torn from normal space. I think we've been pulled through some sort of isodimensional rift. Where are we? Apparently, here, Captain. Sensors and most of Voyager's primary systems are offline. Until repairs are made, it may be difficult to ascertain exactly where here is. It's just like an episode! Except we don't get the little title in the blue- Oh my god! Do we get the intro? Yes. Yes, we do. A Raven Software production. Do we get the Voyager music, though? Because this doesn't... No, this does not sound like the Voyager music at all. The Elite Force intro music. What, we couldn't get the music from the show? We could get the intro, though. Oh, it's expensive? Alright. Does it have more than, like, is it just new Trek, or can I do classic Trek in it? Ideally, it would be great if it was, like, a sequel to Bridge Commander. Which, by the way, I'll try to beat, like, you know, um, maybe when I come home from work or something. The only reason I stopped playing it was that mission kept crashing. But I, I think it was a random crash. I don't think it's a repeatable one. So I think if I just do that mission, I, I can eventually force my way through the, through the crash. Here, I'll just do the Voyager sound with my mouth. I actually like the Voyager uh, intro music. I think it's pretty badass. Voyager, I believe, was the first Star Trek Captain's show to have a CGI intro. All the others Voyager were models. Voyager was attacked by an unknown force and transported to oh, some fuck, kind of starship the... oh, graveyard. Oh, wow, okay. Whereabouts unknown. The ship is heavily damaged. Communications, propulsion, and other systems are offline. Until repairs are done, we're utterly helpless. Stranded. Let's get this ship back together, Chakotay. Get Chakotay, do all the work. I'll be in my we office having some coffee. Those other ships and exactly where we are. Oh, look at this. I can walk around. Why do we have wheels Captain, on the chair? A containment leak in what the fuck? We're going to have a warp core breach. Ensign Monroe, you're wearing a hazard suit. Get down to engineering what? and help Bellana seal that. I room. I am hazard suit man. You're right. Oh, look at this. Wow, is this how the screen actually works? You could actually Captain, see from multiple angles? Attempting to compensate with maneuvering thrust. That's cool. Look, my shadow goes through it too. That's even cooler. I'm having a hard time. Look, I'm like a cameraman now on Star. Oh wow, this shit actually is a window? And see if communications are back online. Oh. No, but seriously, wheels on this chair? Like, come on. Uh, you know how much this, like, this shit moves around? Hey, I'm the guy in the hazard suit, alright? Just call me the Freeman. I'm exploring the bridge, alright? Give me give me a second. I'm Star Trek geeking out here. Look at that. Got that shit. Oh, wow, here's the plaque. Oh, oh, oh let's get... Hey! Hey, hey! I, I have a meeting... It's Toss Abrams with the TNG. Oh, there's TNG expansion, huh? 
That makes sense because of the show Lower Decks. Hey, check out this plant. Ensign, this plant was in the show. You a direct order. You go, what are you guys gonna do, court martial me? I'll get down there when I get down there. Hold on. Uh, Earl Grey, uh, sweetened. No? Captain, one of those oh, ships fuck. appears to be the remains of a constitution Whoa, 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 a constitution class? Where is it? Is it the USS Enterprise? Better not be. It's over here. Oh, hey, I'm in your quarters, Janeway. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna sit here and look out into the stars. Oh, shit. What is with these chairs? Wait, you have wheels on your chair? What the f- What? So, like, when, when they get in a battle, this chair just, like, tips over and stuff? Alright, hold on. Alright, I'm gonna mess with the volume, because I don't think the volume is loud enough, because I think I figured out how the uh, mixer in OBS works now. So I'm gonna up the volume a little bit for the game. But I have to quit the game to do so. But I will save. I like- I like this kind of stuff, you know? This is how you make a- oh wait! Okay. Can't do anything with that. Right, hold on. Oh, look at this! You can see, like, here's the bridge. Maneuvering thrusters. Oh, okay, so that's on the... Um, saucer section. Forward photon torpedo launcher, that's there. Ventral phaser strip. Forward phaser strip. Mid hole phaser strip. Busted collectors. Yeah, that's right. That's from that one episode they went into Nebula. Lowered position. Large outboard structure which houses the warp drive. The nacelles drop when the engines are not in use. The articulated design allows use of warp speed. Wait, well, I was reading that! Warp speed without damaging the fabric of space. Oh, I see. So that's why Voyager has to, has a little animation on its model when it goes into warp. Because in that one episode of Next Generation, we found out that when you go past warp 5, you damage space. So this was their way around it. Logging off Elkar's menu system. But that was also a good way to show off the CGI of the show, because again, Voyager was the first one to have, like, CGI effects. Before that, it was all, um, all little, little toy models. Alright. So I upped the volume a little bit. Let me know if it's too loud. It won't be any louder for me. This is, it only... Welcome it, to Voyager, The volume will only, system. like, be different for you guys. Alright, but I also need to mess with this a little bit. Now I can't hear what they're saying. Actually, let's lower lower this and this. There we go. Because we want to hear what they're saying, like voice-wise. Um. Yeah, this looks. This... All right, back to the game. Do, do, do. That's great. Your shadow just glitches out. Commander. I'm sorry, Ensign. I don't have time to talk right now. We got plenty of time. All right, fine. I'll get to fucking engineering. Where's the turbo lift? Jesus Christ! I'll go turbo talk to Bellana. Malfunctioning. Initiate vocal command using manual interface. Computer. Deck eleven. Engineering. Got to talk into my mouse. Computer. Oh shit. Take the turbo lift to engineering. All right, I did that. So here's my theory, right, about Star Trek timelines. Yeah. So when Scotty went back in time, who's fixing the data shunt here? Showers and chill, sir. Good. And Renner's on the Jeffries tubes. Oh, that's good that they're all there, uh, man. Talking about Star Trek ships. What's this do? Does nothing. So when Scotty went back in time and created, um, what was it, transparent aluminum? That's what started the original show's prime timeline. Because that, would, I guess, would later be part of the eugenics war when Khan would start that nuclear war in the 90s that would wipe out, like, one-third of humanity. Then again, I don't know what's going on now with Star Trek's timeline. Like, I, you'd think they would have fixed it in, like, Enterprise, you know, with the Temporal Cold War. To, to make it more up-to-date with the actual, like, you know, real history of Earth. Can you give me a hand with this plasma relay? Because, again, the show was made in 1960, so, like, uh, they had... 
you know, and it takes place in the future, obviously, so they had a fake timeline. Abrams sucks my nuts, man. <laughs> Abrams' verse is fucking terrible. Oh, God. What? What? Ah! I'm sorry! Oh! Oh! Okay, well, I fucked that up pretty bad. You told me to do that! Wasn't me. Doop, 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 Hey, I mean, we don't, you know, like, hey, one less crewman, hey, less rations. Sorry, Monroe. The data shunt's been severed here. Everything down this way. Oh, don't worry. I know how to press a button. We're getting a power search here. Monroe, quick. Hit that panel and shut off this relay. I don't know, man. Last time I hit a panel, we had some problems. close. Chill. I need to get this containment field down. There's an override in the... I haven't watched all of Discovery yet. But Discovery and Picard are not Abramsverse. They're prime timeline. What's up, Butterfly? With the guitar? Is that even possible? Shut down the containment fields. Okay. Like, Discovery and Picard is somebody else, right? Like, Ken... Uh, like, Burstman or something? I don't know. It's like... I, I forget who the guy is that's in charge of Discovery and Picard, but it's not Abrams. And it's not Abramsverse, because Abramsverse is a complete reboot, including Kirk. Discovery and Picard are prime timeline. Like, Discovery is clearly after Star Trek Enterprise. And leading into the original show. Because Pike in, in Discovery is the same Captain Pike that we see in the first three episodes of Star Trek. Heck, his first officer is the same first officer, too. Which I kind of like. I like the idea that, like, um, in the future, the, um, the fashion of the 60s comes back. And it was kind of cool to see Captain Pike be Captain Pike again. But I haven't seen, like, season three or four yet. Find Jeffrey's tube. Take the turbo lift. I failed. I failed to take it to engineering. I mean, the guy ruined Star Trek and Star Wars. I don't really like Abrams too much. I'd appreciate it if he stays away from anything else that I like. Yeah, he totally fucked up Star Wars. <laughs> Man. And he fucked up Star Trek before that. Remember the Wrath of Khan that he did? Where Spock is chasing down, like, Khan, and then they have to get in this fucking fight? Oh, the miniskirts? I think that's brought up in Lower Decks. That's the other Star Trek show that no one talks about, right? Because there's Picard, Discovery, and then there's Lower Decks. And, like, I kind of like Lower Decks. I kind of want a season two of it. Mainly because, um, you know, I'm going to say some spoilers here for those who have not seen Lo Lower Decks. The last episode has Captain Riker and the USS Titan. And the character transfers to the Titan. Which means that season two will be Captain Riker and, um... His first officer, Troy, on the USS Titan, and I want to see that. I also like the fact that it's next-generation timeline. Post-Dominion War next-gen timeline. Okay, that is normal. Because pro Oh, you accidentally watched the last one? I mean, it's not like a Lower Decks has this... Lower Decks is not like Discovery or Picard that has this epic storytelling, you know? It's more like... They're more like singular episodes. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that episode of Next Generation called, um... I forget what it was... It wasn't called Lower Decks, but it was... It was The whole episode was filmed in the perspective of the Ensigns. I think it probably was called Lower Deck. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna make it through this. And there's no way I'm going through this, so...
Now, I know a lot of people like to complain about new Star Trek because it's not, like, perfect, like old Star Trek, but I, I kind of have this... Okay, here, here's how subtle the writing in Star Trek is, right? The old Star Treks are all the Enterprise, and the Enterprise is the best of the best of the Federation, you know, the idealists, right? What about every other ship and every other station? You think they're all idealists, like the like the ones that are handpicked to be on the Enterprise? They're, they probably aren't. And the guys on the Enterprise also probably have a sort of warped view of how, like, the Federation and, and everything is. In other words, they kind of see it as, like, Camelot or Paradise, but in reality, like, it's not always like that. And we see a little bit of that Shades of Grey in Deep Space Nine. And we certainly see it in Lower Decks as well as in Discovery. And in Star Trek Picard, like... Warning. Maybe the Federation was never the Federation, like, like, never what it was supposed to be. Similar to, like, how, like, Leave it to Beaver portrayed in an America that doesn't really exist. Hey, what's up, Thumps? How you doing? Oh, that hail? That hail that came at, like, four in the morning? I not, I mean, four in the afternoon. I mean, I was asleep, but it woke me up. I heard this huge thunderclap, and then it sounded like my roof was being bombarded. But luckily, it didn't cause too much damage. Like, it didn't, it didn't hurt my car or anything. Containment failure. Yeah, I, I, I kind of think Deep Space Nine is the best Star Trek show. But you're always going to get those people that, like, you know, don't like it. Similar to how people don't like Discovery, but at the same time, it's like, well, when ne Next Generation came out, a lot of people hated Next Generation. You know, they, like, like the old Trekkies, especially if you went to Trek conventions, which I didn't do, but, but accordingly, but apparently it was like they didn't even consider Next Gen to be Star Trek. It was only Kirk era in movies. You got lucky? Oh, okay. You didn't get the hail? Uh, it, it, it got a couple of leaves off the trees and stuff, but it didn't do, like, too much damage. It didn't crack any windshields or anything. But yeah, that was, that was a weird way to wake up. Let's see. So that's kind of how I look at the new Star Treks, is... They're not, like... They're not portraying this perfect Federation, they're, per they're portraying a more realistic take at the Federation. There will never be a Babylon 5 game. Monroe, what took you so long? We've got a warp core breach in progress. You need to get in there and shut it down. There are two things you have to do, so listen carefully. Oh, I actually have to listen. Cut the power relays on the main core, then go to the upper level and decouple the dilithium matrix. Ah, oh, the dilithium matrix are cool. Wait so is that just me pushing a cart into something? I've got one in my transporter buffer. Here, let me put on my helmet. Oh, here we go! Hurry up and find those <laughs> There isn't much time before we lose containment and have to reject the core. It's like the... It, 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 no one watched it, but you remember the old Star Trek... Hurry, Monroe. Uh, animated sure series where they have that helmet? Attention. Warp core breach imminent. First, shut down the power relays on the main level. Okay, is that, is that this thing? denied. Oh, God. Monroe, I just remembered. You're going to need the access code to cut the power relays. Where Go is that? Access code station. Why is it not right next to this? How does this? Sh How do you guys survive in Starfleet, man? Displaying power relay access code. Got it. All right now. No, it really is. It's access always eject the core. Power relays have been cut. Attention. So. Warp there... core breach in 30 seconds. Oh shit, 30 seconds. I'm gonna talk about Babylon 5 in a second, but we gotta stop this warp core breach by pressing a bunch of buttons. Yeah, let's take the elevator, because God knows we need to. Attention. This lift has malfunctioned. Of course it's malfunctioned. I gotta get up there though. How oh there's a ladder. Yeah, good job, Starfleet. Ten. Uh-huh. Nine. Oh god. Eight. Dilithium matrix decoupled. Yeah, I decoupled the matrix. Warp core offline. Core breach averted. I gotta say, this set for a TV show is pretty complicated. It's two floors and there's Good a working job. elevator. That was touch and go there for a little while. No problem, Lieutenant. Okay, let's get a cleanup crew in here. Seal that leak. We need to get main power back online. Boric, 
Give me a hand with the resonance cascade. Hey, is that that Vulcan that like went from went to uh, got Ponfar and then tried to hit on Balana and then she just beat the shit out of him? I think it is, right? Okay, so Babylon 5. Um, no, they never made a Babylon 5 game. Gina, watch your alignment. That isodyne array has to be modulated to exactly... But there's, like, Babylon 5 mods for other games. Like, Free Space has one. Um... There's a couple of, like, uh, strategy games that have it. It's a shame, though, because Babylon 5 would make a pretty good game. Especially for, like, space combat, like something similar to Wing Commander. Not good. The whole intermix matrix is out of whack. Oh, look at my shadow. Check this out. Bridge. The leak's contained, but we've got some heavy damage here. I don't know how soon we'll get Warp Drive back online. Or I'm, I'm just kind of like, did Raven Software do a tour of the set? Or did they just do it all from, like, the TV show? You know, in other words, they just did it from, like, reference photos. When they rendered this whole thing. Because this is, I'm, I'm, like, I'm kind of impressed. That's the other thing, like, Babylon 5 is not on any streaming service, you have to buy the episodes. And I've been thinking about buying all the episodes, but I know as soon as I do, as soon as I buy all five seasons of Babylon 5, uh, it'll come out on, like, CBS or, what? no, Paramount Plus or whatever, or, like, Disney or some shit, you know, one of the streaming services I have, or, like, Netflix. It used to be on Netflix. Intruder alert. What? All security and hazard team personnel to the loading dock. Hey, wait a minute, you look familiar. Are you Q? Go to the loading dock, alright. Sure. Decade loading dock. Defense. Human rotation. Ah! Come on. If you need medical attention, just come back here. Monroe, over here. Wait, it has Crusade and the movies? Crusade only lasted one season, right? Crusade's like, what's in the box? I don't know, he's got a thing in the box. They're taking our supplies. We have to stop them. There are two of them behind a barricade in there. They're launching energy grenades. See if you can eliminate them. Ready? And we never find out. We never find out anything. Like, Crusades is just like, we're set up a bunch of... Oh, wait, wait, let me get... All right, what are we fighting, Cleons? Yeah, it looks like Cleons. They're stealing our shit. All right. Who takes cover in Quake 3? Corrosion? Oh, I got a Cleon gun. Oh, okay. That's the secondary. Is that a Herojin gun? No, he uses the same gun. Oh, more of them. Hee -hee. You guys like taking cover over there, huh? Have you seen our movement speed? We don't need to take cover. We're faster than the projectiles. Oh, I'm out of book. Oh, wait, no, I need help. Dying shit like what you've never seen in Babylon 5. I didn't realize when I was here watching it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because they have that shit, but, the, but it's like the whole plot is there's a virus on Earth, and so Earth makes a mega ship to find the first ones to figure out how to stop the virus. That was uh, done by Allies of the Shadows. So it's like some kind of pregenitor virus. And so Crusade, the Crusade ship was supposed to go and explore parts of space and find more old ones and like uncover old ones tech to help fight the virus or else everyone on Earth was gonna die. What are you waiting for? Aha! I fooled you. Hey, hey, you guys have a health station around here? Hey, Doc. Uh, medical. 
You'll be oh, hey, he actually did heal me. Nice. <laughs> I like how this guy has to, like, he needs me to get on an elevator. Or to press a button. Wait for you, Monroe. I'm going to help two well, you can press the button to get me to go up there. Here, I'll press the button then. Look at this. I, I live in the future, yet I have problems with elevators. Also, elevator design. Why is the button on the side and not here? Pressure right. Yeah, I'll take it. I do like how they use different weapons so I can like tell who's like uh Federation and who isn't Wow you can use max power and just completely disintegrate him? Nice. That was like the first thing I remember from Next Gen. There's that episode where Riker falls in love with this chick that's like a biological weapon, and at the end of the episode he has to kill her. And so he sets his phaser to max, and when he does it, she just disintegrates. And I thought like that was like the one of the first episodes I ever saw, and I was like, man, that's cool. I gotta watch this show. The first season of Next Gen was, like, really gory. Too. Like, they, they went all out with some of the uh, effects, and then they dialed it back. My guess is they got complaints. And we would see some of that gore later be, be shown in uh, Voyager. Like, especially when they introduced Species 8472 or whatever they're called. The Lundine. Or Undyne or whatever. Because there's that one uh, part where they go into the Borg ship and there's all these Borg and they're all mutilated. And it looks like something out of Time Bandits. So, I'm wondering, and uh, like definitely these new Star Trek shows, they don't have the problems. Um, with censorship that the old Star Trek has. So I'm wondering if they are gonna like push the uh, push the violence and the body horror, like especially with the Borg. Like I feel like the Borg are pretty body horror esque. You know, you can have a lot of like fucked up shit happen. I mean, Discovery already showed us Cleon titties. All right, that's already happened. Full frontal Cleon titties. For those who who ever wanted to see that. They're on the run. We did it. Oh hey. Two box like. Well, you did a bad job again. Two box to bridge. The intruders have been repelled. Well done. It seems our situation is worse than we thought, Tuvok. Report to the conference room. Acknowledged. Lieutenant Foster, have the team report to hazard operations. Oh, by the way, Monroe, you're demoted for killing that one guy in the hallway. It's like, oh, you saw that? I am certain that many of you are curious as to our situation. Voyager has been transported. Where is this room? Space it was never in the show. It seems that many other disabled vessels are present here as well. We have detected an energy dampening field surrounding the area that is draining Voyager systems of power. For the moment, we are trapped like the other ships and cannot escape. Like the Tarkanus gravity will. 247 ships have been lost. See, this is why I hate Bolians. It was a Bermuda Triangle. You know, back on Earth. Perhaps. Our primary weapons and propulsion systems are offline at the moment. The captain's current strategy is to find out as much as we can about our surroundings while we affect repairs. So, what's the deal with our unwelcome visitors? We do not have much information about them as of yet, Mr. Beesman. They appear to be scavengers of some sort. Well, at least they're not packlets. Klingons, humans, and Malons. With only short-range sensors operational, we have been unable to locate their vessel since it departed. However, we have detected a vessel nearby. While sensors indicate no life signs, we have detected a functioning power source on board. Our hope is 
that their computer systems are still operational and contain information about this area. The hazard team will transport onto this vessel and retrieve any files that are still intact. No life signs? Like a ghost ship. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> While your superstitious beliefs are quite illogical, Mr. Chell, caution is recommended. Your team leader, Lieutenant Foster, will now brief you on your specific mission objectives. Lieutenant? All right, hoorah, we're gonna go kick ass! This oh, wait, no, this is wrong, wrong sci-fi. Minimal encounter probability. The hazard team will split up into two squads. Alpha Squad, my group, will beam into Control Room A. Ensign Monroe and Beta Squad will be transported to Control Room B. Our objective is to have at least one of the teams locate a functioning terminal to extract any information we can and return to Voyager. In the unlikely case of hostile encounters, unlikely. technicians should be protected at all costs to ensure retrieval of this information. Any question? Yeah, how do I get out of this chicken Sounds shit outfit? Like a cakewalk. See the quartermaster, Oviedo, in the equipment room. Gear up, then report to transporter room one. Dismissed. Now they made a sequel to this game, but it wasn't Raven Software. But uh, I, I believe it has Picard in it. But I think that one, I don't own that one. And I also think that's one of those games that you can't get online. The thing about Star Trek games is you can't find them on GOG or Steam because it's like, I guess people can't agree on who, who, who gets the money, you know, the publishing rights. Oh yeah, 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 that, that's the ending of season one, right? Where the Zergs show up and it's like, Okay, so here's my theory of what happened there. That episode was so gory. That's the one where Riker eats the worms and stuff too, right? That episode is so gory and so disgusting that they probably got letters for it and it was probably banned in like certain countries, like possibly Germany. Because <laughs> you could tell they were setting up that that enemy, that parasite was going to be the, the big bad of next gen, right? And then we never hear from them again. And then I guess what happened is they retooled that enemy into the Borg and later on used, um, oh, can someone allow that, what Silent Chain just said? Apparently Blue Me is not allowed. Thank you. Thank you, Never Conquer. Is the triple one? Oh, the triple one's fantastic. That one's like, that one has nothing to do with anything, but it's a great episode. Man, data gathering. I was hoping for some action our first time out. Be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. So, my guess is, going back again to that TNG episode, my guess is, they retooled the board to be that, and then they kind of did the whole, um, uh, uh, like, you know, oh, the enemy within thing, they did that with the founders in Deep Space Nine. The gore was cut there? Oh, was it? Yeah, I kind of figured, because I'm like, man, that episode could not pass in Germany. That episode is... That dude's head explodes, and then a thing pops out of his chest. <laughs> it is, like, there, there's like the gore episodes where they use like a phaser and the guy's skin melts off and stuff. And it was like, damn, Next Gen was pushing it. I wonder how long those scavengers have been here. I don't know. I'm surprised they managed to survive this long. I wonder where their ship is. That's what I mean. It's like, are we going to see some of that stuff in Star Trek Picard and, and Star Trek uh, Discovery? I think Discovery now is in the TOS timeline. According to their uniforms, they're now in... Because before they were pre-TOS. Let's blow the... <laughs> you gotta test... Oh my god. Alright, well, okay. I can look in people's lockers. Where's my locker? Okay, so we have our, our like, uh, military... Un well, well, we have our normal Starfleet uniform, which is this. And then we have this uniform that we wear when we're on the mission, which is kind of redundant, in my opinion, but okay. Also, apparently the uniform we wear on mission is always red. They get answers in Star Trek Online? I gotta play more Star Trek Online. I, I'm a lifetime member. I became one at, like, when it was pay to play. Like, within the first month. Like, I baited it and everything. But, like, I would like to go back and replay it because they redid all the starting areas. The starting areas used to be, like, total crap. There was no voice acting, there was no, like, scripted events. I also want to replay it because it's like, I know that we have... 
like uh, Odo, Rene Abajan, or whatever. He come he he comes and does some voice acting. Um, I also know Denise Crosby comes in and she does some voice acting. She, uh, reprises Tasha Yar. So I, I you know just just to hear those people play those characters again is worth it for me. There's also some pretty interesting mods too for Voyager. Like one's a whole star base and it's like frozen in time. And it takes place in the original show universe. I also want to check that out at some point cuz I want to do a thing where I where I, you know, I don't really play the game but I check out like user-made multiplayer maps. Didn't she get eaten by a tar monster? Well, Tashi R. There's two Tashi Rs, all right? There's the Tashi R from yesterday's Enterprise. All right, guy that's not in the show. Hold on, I gotta do the sound on this. It's like... Voice volume's topped out, man, like... Because I feel like the music is a little overpowering. If you want, you can test out your weapons in the holodeck here behind you. But I also think the music doesn't change until the level loads. And then, okay, so there's the Tashiara that gets killed by the Tar Monster. Which is the dumbest way to kill a character. Um, and then there's the Tashiara in Yesterday's Enterprise that went back in time on the Enterprise C that fought the Romulans. And then her daughter becomes Sela. And Sela is the Empress of the Romulan Empire. So, in other words, if, if you're going to have the actress, Denise Crosby, come back, she can play Sela as well as Tashiara. And I'm pretty, I think Sela was a big deal in Star Trek Online when they introduced the Romulan faction. So, they probably got the the voice actress to come in to do Tasha Yar and Sela for like a throwback mission. I don't need to test the weapons. For, well, actually, no, what, what, can I go to a French uh, bar and play pool? Oh wait, no, run the Sherlock Holmes simulation. Initiating program. I knew. Ah, oh, Fistful of Datas, yes. That's a good episode. Oh, crap. So, th wait, they're legitimately cowboys with revolvers? Yeah, they, they, yeah, they are. They're cowboys with cowboy guns? <laughs> wait, wait, can, can we run a uh, Napoleonic Warfare Q scenario? I like how they just repurposed the deathmatch level. I can't pick up their their gun though. That sucks. Get back here. Oh, look at these explosive barrels. What's this? Okay. So my only big issue with Star Trek Online is that it's an RPG, which I know is kind of stupid to say, but it's like, I wish it was more of a simulation. <laughs> That's my only big gripe about it. Alright, well I did the high noon. Uh, what am I doing? Oh wait, I need to heal though, what the? Don't we have like a, a medic thing around here somewhere? No? I need to go see the doctor, I'm at 35% health! What is this? Transporter room, as ops, current position. The holodeck. So there's no way I can heat. Wait, I'm going to the turbo deck. Maybe I can. No. Alright, fine. I'll go to the transporter then. Where is it? Okay, I take a right. Wait, what, what else is here? We have a lounge? I like how it's like. 
What's the sh what's the layout of the ship? The layout of the ship is whatever the plot demands it to be. So, oh, there's the doctor. Hey, Ms. Durant, while we have some extra time, I thought we'd review first aid combat protocol. Oh, she's the one medic. More time. Thank you, doctor, but I think I am well prepared. I did go through extensive training and testing for this position. Of course. Well, let me know if you develop any nervousness or pre-mission jitters. Don't worry, doctor. You'll be fine. Doctor. Yes, Ensign. I need medical assistance. Doctor, you don't appear to be injured. What do you mean? I'm at 35 health. Excuse me. Ensign, I'm quite busy. You are a terrible doctor. Look at this mustache. Michael. Yeah? Jeff. Hey. This is how I interact with my workers. Or, or my coworkers. The transporter room. Like, yo. Hey, hey, Monroe, what's up? Mitch. Hey, Monroe. Good luck. I'm sure everything will go fine. Liz. <laughs> Just stand on a table, address everyone by their first name. Excuse me. Good luck, Monroe. I don't know your name, though. Guess that's not important. Crap. <clears throat> you know what's a missed opportunity? Mirror Universe Picard. I think Star Trek Nemesis would have been a way better movie instead of they just ditched the whole Romulan bullshit that they were going with and just did the Mirror Universe. It couldn't have been any worse than the movie we got. Energize. Could you imagine Mirror Universe Data? He just has like a, an eye patch. Alright, fine, I'll get on the thing. Set, Alex. Okay, ready to transport Team 2. Hey, what's up, Bardzerker? How you doing? Energize. Uh, hopefully I don't see any weird, like, flying worm things while we energize. Okay, good. I didn't. We're good. Oh, this looks like that ship from Nickelodeon. Alright. Let's see if any of these consoles are working. Look at this. Never seen such a ship. Then you never watched Babylon 5. I think I found the data tour. Just give me a minute to start the download. Hey, speaking of which, have you noticed how Star Trek Picard is Mass Effect? I kinda like it. You would. You're a Bolian. He is a Bolian, I knew it! I wonder what those are. They look like fireflies. Do not mention that show. Foster to Monroe. We've tapped into a data terminal here and started the download. Chell found one here too. He's accessing it now. Looks like a blue milk run, huh, guys? Wait, is that is that the hazard sound from Half Life? What, what, what's going on over there? Just start downloading. Okay, I got it. Starting download. It is. Of an indie game. <laughs> oh no. I will say, the, the, the ending of first season of Discovery was pretty goofy, but I was like, alright, fine. <laughs> alright, this is how we're gonna end it? Okay, cool. <laughs> like, whatever. I can't be any goofier than what's going on here. <laughs> Yes, sir. They just, just threw money at the lawyers. Uh, okay, that might explain why, why, like, why Picard does feel like Mass Effect. Maybe they just like, yeah, let's just rip off video games. No one will notice. Must have raised this thing's shields. We can't contact Voyager and we can't beam out. We need to. I guess we live here now. We've done some scans and it looks like there's a junction point in Section Twenty Nine. I see it. What what indie game was it? Do you know? Take these shields down. Good luck. Foster out. Section Twenty Nine. Oh hey, a health terminal. Great. How do we get up there? This way. I guess it's done. Weapon terminal, of course. This kind of reminds me. Have you ever seen the Flight of the Navigator? <laughs> I'm getting that vibe out of it. Find section 29. What about section 31? We don't talk about. Hey, you know, speaking of which. In Star Trek Discovery, people just know what Section 31 is? Like, they shouldn't know what that is, man.
We come in peace on all of us! Not ready for sure. Tardigrades. Oh, okay. What was it? Was it like a, um, an adventure game or? What are those things? They seem to have an isophasic signature similar to our own transporter technology. Transporters? Point and click. Ah. Wee. Telefragged. You could tell Raven was having fun with this fucking level. They were like, well, let's put this here. Let's put these light effects over there. All right, cool. Let's have the door do that. I don't speak Cleong. I, I could just say random crap in Cleong. I, I, it's kind of interesting how Cleongs talk now in Discovery compared to how they used to talk. They're very, like, very growly, like, very, like, in the throat. Oh, no, that's the wrong button. Whoops. Okay, none of this does anything. Excellent. <laughs> Let's get the phaser out. Actually, nah. That's the way to section twenty-nine. Is it? Yeah, we're above the room we were in. Like the Masulone and <laughs> did I have that too. <laughs> The spore drive. Ah! Oh, oh my god. Just wave it around! But did it have Cleon titties though? Did it have a double agent Cleon? <laughs> that they and every time we get an episode about that, we have to say Cleon titties in the flashback? It's like they were proud of that scene, you know they were. They wouldn't have shown it a million times. Uh, we're gonna give the Star Trek fans exactly what they wanted. They didn't know that they wanted this. We're gonna give it to them. Hmm. Wait, they locked their doors? a ladder? Oh, it is a ladder. Alright, hold on. Figure this out here. So... Alright. Oh, this looks like something. Wharf in a thong. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's... Back, tuck, It's open. They shoot energy projectiles. They're spawning from this shit. Can we blow this shit up? Yes, we can. Did it respawn? What the? All right. Okay, we're good. We're good to go. Teammates, they're, they're your typical AI teammates that their weapons don't seem to do any damage. I 
They s okay, so they spawn in. Alright, there we go. And someone's playing that keyboard like Peter Bateman in Ghostbusters. What? It regens? Oh, it's this purple shit! Get out of here, purple shit! So that's what repairs the ship. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Ah. Alright, neat. What else is shooting at? This stuff? I don't even know what this stuff is. Raven Software was like, you guys like the Zen levels in Half-Life? Oh, we can beat that. I don't know if you can. It's like, oh, I, we got some ideas. Let's go. Wait for me. Would you imagine if this was actually in the show? Like the, like, the set designers would have just, like, shit their pants. They'd be like, oh, come on, man. There's no way we can put this in. Like, now, yeah, they could do it. You know, they would just CGI, like, some of the crap. But back then, no, they had to actually make the set. What? Ah. I was gonna be like, darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. She's not impressed though. It's like, is this what the Quake 3 engine can do? Chell, are you sure this is the right place? Positive. Maybe the aliens got them. Boo! Immediately gets shot. Looks like our scans weren't quite thorough enough. Hey, Chell! I'm gonna jump! Catch me! Stow it, crewman. Look, Monroe, we've got to deactivate the shields before. How do these guys pass the academy? console indicated there were three main sources we need to hit in order to do this. Your team should be able to take out the main computer core through there. We'll take out the backup power systems up here. We'll meet up at the main power core and shut it down. Yes, sir. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Good luck, Monroe. We'll meet you at the power core. Hey, so, behind you. So, remember in the first season of Voyager, when they, they, they had all these plot lines that they just completely abandoned? Uh, one of them was that Tuvok was training those, like, you know, the, the four crappiest crew members. Remember that? Like, Tuvok's training these four people and they're just, they're just awful. Like, they're like the worst guys in Starfleet. And some of them are Maquis and everything. And then that, that, like, that whole, like, arc with those characters is completely abandoned. And that's kind of what this feels like to me. Where you have, like, the Hazard team. And, you know, they, when this game was coming out, they were saying, like, oh, well, they'll only be incorporated in the episodes. And it's like, I don't remember the Hazard team even mentioned in any of the episodes. Like, maybe they're mentioned, like, once in a sentence, but we never see them. They're never, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, they're not really a thing. But these these guys kind of come off as that, especially this Bolian, because, you know, uh, one of those guys in the Tubok episode was a Bolian. And he was your typical kiss-ass bully and that nobody likes. Oh god. Why did they just come after me? I guess it could be worse. What if they did kill my my teammates? Then I don't. Then it'd be like a really annoying escort mission. All right, let me try to take out some of these spawn points.
finally. It's nice that the aliens provide me with enough ammo and, energy and health energy to continue this invasion of their ship. Nope, can't go in there. I'll, there was another uh, Star Trek first-person shooter game before this, right? Like, Klingon Academy? I hear that one's, like, okay-ish. His name's Shell, and is the same voice actor. I think this is Shell, isn't it? Shell. It is! Oh, it's you. Sorry. That explains it right there. He's the same character. Okay, so they got to use him in the game, at least. But what about that one guy, um, you know, that, that Maki guy that, you know, his storyline was too dark, so they just abandoned him? Because, you know, his storyline was the reason why he hated Cardassians was they, like, killed his family and raped his wife, and that, that was a little too much. Oh, there's a stasis weapon, of course. But I can also see why they couldn't use Monroe, because Monroe is, um... It, their gender is not defined, because when you start the game, you could be either, like, you know, male or female. So I guess they decided to just never show Monroe in Voyager. That way, like, the Monroe character would be canon no matter which gender you pick. I don't know about the comic book. I have the comic book in my garage. I'll look for it. And then I'll, I'll read it and see what, what it is, but I think it's just like a retelling of the first uh, episode of the game. Right, it would be hard to cast someone with that square of a jaw. What the hell? Get rid of that. Let's blow up more stuff, too. Doesn't matter, this ship is self-repairing. But yeah, I think that's why they abandoned the story arc of the... of those, like, four crew members that Tuvok trained. Because number one, I guess it wasn't that interesting. And number two, it's like, they... they didn't really know what to do with them anyways, and, you know, the plot was too dark. It's kind of like how they sort of abandoned the whole Maquis and Federation thing, because that I find that interesting. The idea of, like, the crew was half Maquis, half Federation. So... You know, there was always this chance of rebellion, or, like, um, the Maquis crew uh, going up against Janeway. They touch up on that in an episode where everyone plays this holodeck game. That's a mutiny. I forget what happens in that episode, I just remember they all play this mutiny game, like, it's very popular among the crew. Because, you know, you play it, and then you try to pick, you know, uh, the sides, right, it, whether you're with Janeway or with Chakotay. One thing I will say, though, is I hate the Kazon. I think they're, I think they're, like, a lazy race. Oh, that, oh, you're right, yeah. Siska shows up and, like, does something with that. I think Siska was an okay villain. I didn't mind her too much. Like, but she's definitely, like, early Voyager villain. Because I feel like the show got... The show changes once they encounter the Borg. Like, once they get rid of Kess and they enter Borg space, then the show gets, like, I, 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 it, I definitely think it got better after that, but it, it's a completely different show. Guess is another story arc that was kind of abandoned as well, right? I, I think in one of the books they explain her a little bit, but I don't read books, so... Wait, should we shoot that? I don't know. I guess we're shooting it. All right. Another one of those transporters. 
but it looks like it's deactivated. Those might be the controls up there. Oh, so we just shoot them? Can't get up there. Hey, give me a boost. Come on, just crouch. How am I supposed to get up there? Oh wait, I got this weapon. Oh, this is neat. This is like the uh, the bow gun and heretic. What's the secondary? All right, you know what this is? This is the bow caster and Jedi outcast. <laughs> this is what it is. All right, well, there's a teleporter up there where the switch is. I, we can see it right here. I can't jump up there. So how the hell do I get up there? There's so many things they can do with Star Trek Picard, too. I feel like they could do, um... Because there's so many, like, um, loose ends. Again, like, you know, we were talking about that first season of Star Trek Next Gen, right? Like, with that, with that Zerg parasite. Because, I mean, let's face it, that's what they are. They're the Zerg. Like, they could bring those guys back. You guys aren't even gonna help me on this, huh? Should I shoot it? <laughs> yep, no, these characters, like... I gotta get up- there's a switch! I see it! I can't get up there, though. Track. I guess I guess I have no choice. Ah, I keep getting stuck on geometry too. Nope. And again, there's still this potential. I would love to see Mirror Universe Picard. Looks like another of those transporters over there. Wait, no, that could give us an excuse Let's to go. have Mirror Universe data? Ah! A bit too confusing. It, like... No. You mean like in terms of gameplay, or do you mean like in terms of where they fit in the plot? Because <laughs> I'll agree on both. From that pod. There's no trace of Telsia. It's as if she was completely vaporized. Well, that's no great There's loss. We could have done, Chell. We better get a move on, or we might be next. Man, we don't even shed one tear, huh? She just got Tasha Yard right in front of us, and uh, like, we're not even gonna care. Yeah, someone died, but it's, you know, she was a red shirt, so who cares? Do, do, do. I just shoot this brain thing. There we go. Oh, that's how you end up here. Was 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 Shell actually like in Starfleet or was he Maquis? I, I I can't imagine him in either, to be honest. Like I don't feel like he would pass the psych test in Starfleet. But I also don't think the Maquis would have him. All four of them were Maquis? Oh my god, Shell. He doesn't look like he has the cojones to be Maquis, man. You gotta But I guess he's an engineer, right? That's why I'm escorting him. And I get the Maquis take whatever they can get, huh? Is that the Star 
starship graveyard of God. What's that in the middle? I don't know, a banjo man? Who, who knows? Why don't you get in here? What's wrong? Hey, get in here. You're the guy that's supposed to do that press the buttons. Oh, okay. You're very observant from ten feet away. A planet. I wonder if that's their home. Oh yeah. Well, it looks like shit. My planet's better than that. Oh, now you come in here. What are you doing? All right. Hmm. I can't shut down the core from here. The main controls are on that upper level. I notice how my gun is like. Um, but I think I found the security sequence for that door. Throbbing? Hold on. Got it. Or breathing, whatever. It's doing something. Alright, let's go upstairs. Um, make sure the door is not here. Nope, it's not. Did he open this? Or did we come through this? Oh no, this is definitely the right way. Definitely where it's at. Gun's not bad. Take some ammo though. I gotta say the phaser's still cool. I really like the TNG phaser. I know some people might not like the remote design and prefer the gun design, but I always thought the remote design was kind of neat. I actually have a uh a toy of the movie phaser from like you know uh, Wrath of Khan and you could and you could see how that would be later on become this phaser because in that one you can you can actually make it a gun phaser like there's a little like like part of it that pops out and it's the remote and then if you put it on the gun then it's like the gun so it's like the best of both worlds I don't think it matters so it's just a prop like anything else but That was, I guess that was like the prop department where they were kind of trying to figure out how to do the guns for like TNG. Vampire gun from, from Turok. You know, I gotta play Turok again. I've never beaten Turok. I mean, I used cheat codes to get to the last level when I was a kid and then unlock all the guns. And Kapla, the ghost Oh. Oh my god. They got these disco lights. I mean, they get repaired, but at least that'll stop it. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, they got fell quarters here, too. All right. Not like it matters if they get repaired, but whatever. Visually, this game is still kind of interesting. I gotta say, the action's definitely like it's it's clearly a '90s shooter. Like the action is fast. There must be one of those pods in here somewhere that's powering that energy field. One of those brain pods. You know what else would be interesting in Star Trek Picard is if we see Deep Space Nine characters. Like, um, like Jake Sisko. I, I'm kind of amazed we don't see O'Brien. Oh 
Oh god. Yeah, they <laughs> gave me an L cars hug. Oh, you should check out the menu. The menu is pretty interesting. Look, you can go here and like you can click on stuff and it'll tell you things. And it's got like all this, the L car sound effects. And the menu's different for everything, like like the main menus uh, and the in-game menu. Like like uh, this this game is actually pretty well crafted. For like if you're a fan of Star Trek and first person shooters, this is definitely like the best action Star Trek game to play. Though I haven't played the third person Deep Space Nine game or Kleong Academy. Or the sequel to this, but I think the sequel wasn't made by Raven, it was made by somebody else. Okay, this is it. Those consoles shut down the computer core. I'll work on getting this access to them. And of course we get all the voice actors, um all we get all the voices from Voyager. Like Kate Mulgrow, um Jerry Ryan. Everyone else. Monroe to Foster. We've shut down the main computer core. Good. We just shut down the backup power systems. We're on our way to the main power core. Right. Chell and I will meet you there. You and... Where's Telsia? She... You think the Cisco returns? We'll be in the back. Hmm. Would he? If he returns, he should not have aged. That would be interesting. And if we get Avery Brooks and Picard, that would be that would be sweet. Sir, sir, come in, sir. Foster. Like, Picard and Cisco haven't met face to face since season one of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Not so good for our very first away mission, huh? Punch him. Punch him right in the Keep face. Keep it together, Chell. Keep it together, damn it! And Voyager's depending on us to get this information back to them. If we fail, everyone on that ship could end up dead. Now let's go shut down that power core and get out of here. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. You mean like that guy you killed in the hallway? My god, why do you always have to bring up that guy I killed with the power... ...with the force field? It wouldn't be our... You know, they could do what they did to Mark Hamill in The Mandalorian. How is Avery Brooks looking now, right? Like, I mean... You know, he's got facial hair. I guess, yeah, you could totally, he could totally still look kind of young. Like, cause Data looked all right in Picard, but Data had, you know, obviously the Data makeup, so that kind of helps. That he would return to... Be well, that's the thing, is it would have to be a plot involving the wormhole. Kind of thing. Or, like, something, you know, similar to how Star Trek Picard had a plot involving the Borg cube, which is why we get Seven of Nine. Which is kind of an interesting interaction when you think about it, because it's like... Yeah, Seven of Nine and Picard never interacted before, and they're both former Borg. In fact, we, we get a lot of, like, Borg actor. We get Icheb, and we get, um... We get Hugh? I was not expecting to see Hugh again. In <laughs> Disco. You know, he could actually. He could be in Discovery because he, he's 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 in the wormhole, right? That means he's like linear time doesn't affect him. That's the thing that was weirding me out about the wormhole. It's like, so they don't live in linear time, but in a way, Cisco was always part of them, but in a way, they created Cisco. Like, I. Great. Well, 
Wait, Discovery's now in the future? I'm only on season two of Discovery. So does Discovery get warped into the future in like season three or four? Because Discovery clearly takes place um, before the original show. But I could, I could also see some kind of time thing happening where they're in the future. It's... It's a fake! <laughs> it's all a holodeck simulation like Enterprise was. Riker's just there in the background, we just never noticed him. You meant- oh yeah, Lower Decks, you're right. Yeah, Lower Decks is definitely TNG. Showing life from a cat's perspective? Yeah, that's- that way we could revisit a lot of those episodes of TNG and be like, what was Spot the Cat doing at this time? <laughs> Just him in a litter box. Alright, what the hell are we doing? Find and turn off main comp- wait, that already- I succeeded, now what are we doing? The Firefly entities appear to be alive and will restore damaged objects. The alien vessel has energy force fields that need to be deactivated. There are strange alien pods that create dangerous electrical energy. Can I recite? No! I can't! I'm sorry, I, I failed everybody. But when I die, can Data deliver my eulogy? Can he say, to know me was to love me? <laughs> Wait, you say something, Chell? Was it important? What is this shit? This looks like the beds in Babylon 5. I pressed that button a couple of times, nothing happened. That's a cool room. Let's blow that up. There we go. How about this. Oh. Excuse me. Did I miss something? I guess we backtrack. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Let's blow it up. This is how Starfleet handles its problems now. We just blow it up. Doesn't matter. People always love to tell me how great the original show is, and like, I like the original show. Don't get me wrong. But one of the most annoying things about the original show is that every fucking episode is Kirk makes a dumbass speech, and then it fixes everything. And everything's nice and clean cut. Until the movies happen. Then it turns out Kirk is just a giant fuck up like the rest of us. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like Kirk will just come in and it's like, You guys should know better than to keep fighting each other. Like Cleon and human. Human and Cleon. Some routine questions about Star Trek? Uh, I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Like, how the hell, where do I go in this level? Hey. Chell, help me out! Who else would it be, Chell? Oh, okay. So, you say that while shooting this wall. I see. Okay. Fireflies. I gotta go find some fireflies. I mean, you guys? Oh, I see. I gotta break this stuff, and then that'll lure them. Oh my, what a puzzle. Well, I mean, I don't see this every day, so... Not too bad. Don't know what Chell's doing now. I guess he's just bored. He's got infinite ammo, so he doesn't care. Oh, that's... So that's what we're doing. You 
Hey, you think Picard's old girlfriend's gonna show up? Vash? In Star Trek Picard? You think Q's gonna show up? He showed up in Lower Decks. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of Star Trek spoilers going on. Where'd Shell go? There he is. But not all of it. Again, I'm only on like season. I've seen the, I've seen Picard, but I haven't seen like the rest of um, Discovery yet. I still got like two more seasons of that. No, so I don't know what's going on with the Red Angel thing yet. I have one health. I have one health, Shell. Oh god, there's more of them. Oh my god! I saved just before that happened, though. Oh, that's an exceptional performance. How do I quick load? This might be one of those infamous quick saves that screw me over because I have one health. Yep, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> There was a hell station back there, right? You think I can get... Oh, I can't go back. And then Chell is pretty much as useless as he is in the show, so... Well, usually, yeah, there we go. Oh, what? What even killed me? Usually there's like a health station every two seconds. So it's not that bad. Can I... I'm gonna make a run for it. Alright, at least I got the health. Alright, what, what? There it is. Oddly enough, it's way easier for me to hit stuff in this game than in Jedi Outcast because the projectile speed's actually decent. The only way it's going to stay open is if one of us keeps it open from here. I guess that means me. Don't worry, Chell. Apparently, my character doesn't know how to use a tricorder, so yeah. Or some god miss. You know, those are the episodes I hate the most of rewatching in TNG are the ones where they go to some planet and there's some kind of bullshit god race and it has to do some kind of dumb crap. And I'm just like, this is the most boring shit ever. And that's like, those are the episodes I really dislike and toss as well. It's like, they go to some place and then it's like, you know, like the one with the, the, the what are they called? The metronons or whatever. You know, and they're like, hey, you guys are all primitive and crap. Hey, join us. And then the Kleong is like, no, join us. And they're like, no, we're actually super godlike powerful. We just choose to live in squander and shit. Now you guys get the hell off our planet. I think we're the fall of the coast. I did like the Guardian of Forever, though. I thought that one was pretty nice. And then there's the one where they where they encounter that godlike creature, but it turns out it's just a child. People love to tell me about the original show and how great it is, and I'm like, remember that Halloween episode? <laughs> remember that episode where where Bones chases the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> I mean, it was a show made in the '60s. What, what can you expect? But like, you know, again, I grew up with Next Gen. So Next Gen was kind of, that's kind of my Star Trek. Benton Mud. I like how Mud's in Discovery. They actually make him dangerous in Discovery, which I was kind of, kind of shocked at. I'm like, wow, Mud's actually, like, 
like, competent. Like, not just competent, but, like, dangerously competent. Like, he was just, I always just sort of saw him as a bumbling buffoon, but no, he's... He's a, he's a, he's a legit threat. He must have gotten crappier when Kirk had to deal with him. But I think he's only in, like, what, like, two or three episodes of Toss. TNG, yeah, I mean, like, an episode of TNG costs, like, something crazy, right? Like, four million dollars an episode? The effects were, like, you know, for a TV show were, like, super high-end. Like, not just the visual effects, but the makeup effects. Did you know Fleetwood Max in an episode of uh, Next Generation? Also, what's up, Kirk Cool Beans? What's my favorite series? I'm gonna have to go with Deep Space Nine. It's gonna be one of those, like, puzzles I gotta do something. Oh no, it keeps repairing it. The original Star Trek was incredible compared to what it should have been. Fun fact, Bones is called Bill and... <laughs> Remember that episode where Bones encounters the salt monster? <laughs> Favorite episode of Star Trek? Uh, oh my god, that's a tough one. I mean, from Deep Space Nine, I like uh, Inte Arma, Silent Legas. That's the one where the Doctor has to take out, you know, that's the Section 31 episode with the Doctor. Yesterday's Enterprise from TNG. I like that one because we get to see like a warlike one. Tears of the Prophets in Deep Space Nine isn't bad either. I'm, how am I supposed to do this? Like, this guy's gonna be so quick. Oh, I know. Like, that's just off the top of my head. Um, what's the episode where Picard gets tortured by Cardassians? That's like a two-parter, right? It's the second part of one... The, you know, the one with David Warner as a Cardassian? The Four Lights? The Four Lights! <laughs> That's what I learned about Taspian eggs? <laughs> How they're a delicacy in Cardassia? <laughs> Where's Joe? He had to stay behind. Oh yes, Darmok and Tanagra. The wall spell killed. Those alien things overwhelmed us, but I managed to get away. Now we've got more. You ever see the toss cartoon? Oh my god. The toss cartoon. <laughs> There's one with a giant Spock and plant creatures. <laughs> Those are the worst. I actually like like Deep Space Nine I consider the best Star Trek, but the worst Star Trek I consider the original show cartoon. Hands down. It's... The animation is so stiff and cheap. And the writing is just goofballs. Yeah, the voice acting is robotic. And it's like, the way the characters move... It's just... It's so bad. <laughs> I... Like, I can't even watch it. That's how bad it is. You know what's interesting about it, like, um, Walter Koenig apparently wrote a bunch of episodes for it. The Darmok episode is all memes. <laughs> That's a great episode, though. I mean, it makes no sense when you think about it. Like, how does a race talk like that in nothing but metaphor? But hey, <laughs> memes are dream. <laughs> And then I guess my favorite Voyager episode is the one where the guy that's the voice of Chucky, who plays, um, you know, the Troy race. Like the telepath, right? And he like single-handedly takes out all the Kazon with the doctor being his radio buddy. Yes, yeah, Suter. He was also in Babylon 5. Looks like some kind of stasis pods. The aliens must have a hibernation system. 
And alien resurrection. <sighs> yeah, exactly. How do they know the metaphor? Like, when you think about it, they're, they're, that whole culture doesn't make any sense. But hey, you know, whatever. It's a great episode. The thing about Star Trek, some people confuse Star Trek for trying to be hard science. It's like, that's not the point of Star Trek. The point of Star Trek is to tell good stories. My favorite Deep Space Nine episode? Okay, there's... You see, that's a tough one, but like, again, I, I guess I would have to go with, um... The Inte Arma Silent Legas, which is the one where the Doctor... Um... It, it's the Section 31 episode where the Doctor basically betrays a Romulan Senator. Another good one is the uh, the one with the meme, It's a Fake, you know, where Cisco gets Garrick to kill a Romulan ambassador. He puts a head out on a Romulan ambassador so that the Romulans can go into the Dominion War. That's like the make or break episode for most Star Trek fans because most people will immediately hate that episode and hate Cisco for what he did. But at the same time, can you blame Cisco for what he did? Oh hey, look, they're in little pots. Right. We just have to shut down the Also it gave us the It's a fake! Maybe the doctor can do something for them if it's not. I mean, you gotta love that episode just for that. Oh, another good one is the magnificent Ferengi because Iggy Pop is in it. He plays a Vorta. And the Ferengi are my favorite next gen race. You didn't think he played a good Vorta? Vortas are weird though, man. You remember the first time we saw the Vorta? Like, it's that chick, right? And she has this psychic attack that we never see ever again. Almost like the writers didn't know what they were doing with the Vorta. They weren't really defined. Hey, what's up, Lusty Bard? How are you doing? How's your day going? I mean, let's let's be honest. No Vorta can compare to Wei Yun. Wei Yun's like the king of Vortas. This is it. The power core. We've got This is the power core? Ah. I really like the the last 5 episodes of Deep Space 9 because you know it's basically one long movie. Because all the episodes lead into the next one. I like it for a lot of reasons. Number one, we get Major Kira in a Starfleet uniform. That's some fan service. Number two, we get to see the Cardassians, like... We actually get to see some hero characters on the Cardassian side. You know, and we basically have a character who's just a drunk turn into, like, the, um... The sort of hero of the revolution. And we get to see Kira actually do what Kira's, like, good at, which is, like, guerrilla warfare. Oh yeah, he still sucks for that. That's the Tears of the Prophet episode. You can't blame him, though! He was a drunk at the time! <laughs> I don't know, I don't trust him. Blow him away, set phasers to full. You were trying to communicate? By killing us? No, Garrick's one of my like he's he's my favorite character though. You don't like Jadzia Dax? It, it also seemed like the actress playing her was caught phoning it in near the end. Like you could tell she didn't want to be on the show anymore. Hey, at least she got killed by someone important and not by a tar monster. Not killed, analyzed. Those pods. You want to talk Enterprise? All right, yeah, we can talk Enterprise. I've seen the whole thing. We only 
wanted information from your computer. <laughs> you want to talk Zindi War and Space Dolphins? You love that show? Fair enough. I like it up until season three. And then I think it crapped the bed. We'll find a way out of here. You'll get to your new home. Foster to Voyager. Lieutenant, it's good to hear your voice. What happened over there? I'll explain when we get back. Let's just say we've made an ally. <laughs> but we have injuries. We need to be directly to sick. Season three comes out of nowhere. It's like they took they took all the plot from season one and two and just said, fuck this. We got this whole other thing. <laughs> That's you think it gets good in season three. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. I because like honestly what I wanted out of Enterprise was the birth of the Federation, and it seemed like they stalled the hell out of that. And then because they stalled the hell out of it, it has to be like this one episode at the end of Enterprise. It was a difficult mission, Monroe. Oh. It looked pretty bad out there for a while. But we got the job done. Have the doctor look at you and then join me in Hazard Ops. I'll be assembling the rest of the team for debriefing. Uh, I also think a lot of the characters kind of went through like, um... There are no medical deferments. Shran? Wait, wait, who's Shran? Is he, is he the, uh, the, the guy that was raiding in Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Like, like, what, wasn't like one of the main Vulcan guys supposed to be a Romulan spy in disguise and they were gonna go with that too? Oh wait, Shren, no, the pink, oh. Wait, he's also played by the guy that plays Wei Yun, isn't he? Ah, oh, that would have been cool. Because, because they were gonna go with, they were gonna go with, um... One of the, well, like, you know, that Vulcan that has a hard on for being such an asshole throughout the whole series? Apparently, he was supposed to be a Romulan, imp like, spy, right? And they were gonna have that reveal happen? I see the doctor's practicing his singing voice. At Jeffrey Combs, man, he's the best G Man. Jeffrey Combs is also in Babylon 5. It's kind of amazing. All right, let's talk to people. Hey. Hmm. Looks like you guys took a little beat over there. Hey, Doc, want to take a look at Monroe? Yeah, give me. Yeah, Doc, Doc, heal me up. Don't ah, Mr. Monroe. Let's point your dildo at me. Rather superficial. Dermal regeneration will not be necessary. Though you have some mild skin irritation, perhaps you would like an analgesic cream. Yes, uh, please. Apply my analgesic cream. Awesome, it's sick. <laughs> Tomographic scans. Hey, you know, I gotta say, uh, the doctor's cameo. No, he doesn't have the mobile emitter yet. It's before the mobile emitter. I I like his cameo in uh, what was it? First Contact. That was good. Oh, really? You could buy it? Oh, man. I'm gonna steal his regenerator. I'm gonna hide it somewhere. That'll really piss off the doctor. Remember that episode where the doctor kept shrinking? Oh, you got it. Did you get an autograph? Get, like, one of those Robert Picardo autographs? He was in First Contact. Remember, like, the Borg are coming in, and then Beverly Crusher's, like, activate emergency holographics simulation right and then he shows up and he's like please state the uh, nature of your medical emergency and she's like the Borg are coming stall them oh okay then he's like oh you guys have some skin irritation would you like some analgesic cream <laughs> like... <laughs> you love the Ferengi episode I don't think that's an unpopular opinion I think the Ferengi are like like again they're the best race the Ferengi episodes are not only, like, funny, but they're also kind of insightful on human nature. Because they really play on the whole, especially in Deep Space Nine, how, like, you know, everyone hates the Ferengi because they're like, oh, you guys are, like, dickheads and stuff. You rip people off and all this stuff. And it's like, the only reason you dislike us is because we represent what you guys used to be. But we were never as bad as you guys. You know, like, like that speech Quark gives Cisco. it's like, we never used nuclear weapons on our own people. We never had slavery. We never, like, had empires. We never did the stuff you humans did. 
yet you look down on us. Also, I, I look at the Ferengi, like, people talk about them, like, how they have bad deals. But it's like, that's your fault. If you're gonna go into business with the Ferengi, and you're not prepared to do business with them, and they screw you over, that that's your fault for being bad at business. That's like being mad at a Cleon for kicking your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the little green men one. What I like about that one is when the, when the, um, when the woman's like, uh, she's like, look, that one must be the matriarch. Because he's grooming them. <laughs> like, <laughs> when he's trying to get their uh, universal translators that are in their ears. What well, were the Ferengi part of the Orion Syndicate? And they're slapping their head. Must operated. be some form of greeting. I also kind of like the play on that one because the general, and that is your typical sci fi 1950s general. They did that a little bit in Enterprise, right? Didn't they do an episode where, um... Where somehow the, the Vulcans end up in the past, like in the 50s? One of them's a plumber. Wait, the last episode, Terra Prime? The one that's kind of a... The one that should have been like a five-parter? Because the, the last season of Enterprise, the fourth season, was kind of like... They, they weren't even going to make the fourth season. Because the third season, like, the ratings were terrible. But fans wrote in. They wrote into the network and was like, please make the fourth season. And so they did, but they get, also gave him, like, a shoestring budget to make it. So I can just run around the ship now, huh? Is that what's going on? Go to the lounge on deck four, then report to locker room. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, no, no, that's... Not. Okay, here's the lounge. Well, in the expansion pack for this game, they actually model all of Voyager. No, that wasn't Kim. That guy had a mustache. So, like, if you play the expansion pack, you can you can walk around the whole ship and go to every part of the ship. Oh my God, Neelix is here. Let me get out of here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't I don't mind Neelix. But you know what? Neelix is no Tuvix. Am I right? You're not gonna say anything. You're just gonna fucking snub me. That's it. That's all you got? You're a fucking cameo! You should be better than that! I still love Mirror Universe, Kim. You know, in that episode of Deep Space Nine where we get Voyager crew from the Mirror Universe? Thoughts on Tuvix? I think they shouldn't have killed Tuvix! But I understand, like, I mean, from a, a production standpoint from the show, yeah, they had to kill Tuvix because, you know, you have these other two actors and they have a contract with the show. So, of course, they were going to come back. Story-wise, though, like, like if they didn't have to worry about that, I, I think they should have kept Tuvix. Or at least for a couple of episodes. I think that would have been interesting. us up pretty good. We're the hazard team. What do you guys expect? We didn't know what to expect. We didn't have all the information. Hey, Monroe. Yo. Alex, did you hear anything about where they're sending us next? I heard Chakotay and Tuvok talking about the scavengers. Oh, yeah? I ran into Kim. I forget. I, 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 for, I forgot about that episode. some data on that machine that brought us here. Hey, Monroe. Word has it I'll be coming along on the next mission. Oh god, not a stealth operation. No, 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 please, no. All available hazard team personnel report to the briefing room. Uh, which briefing room? This briefing room or like the briefing room on the show? This briefing room. With the information your team retrieved, we've been able to learn a few Why isn't Neelix giving us the briefing? <laughs> this is called the Forge. It's generating the dampening field that keeps Voyager and the other ships trapped here. Do we have any idea what's running that thing? Or why it's here. A blind man named LaForge. had no detailed information about it. For all we know, it could be a simple machine. But our main concern right now is finding a way out of here. I feel like Chakotay is an underutilized character. He never really lived up to his potential. He's kind of like Troy in Next Gen. 
repairs done and bring main power back online. Then, hopefully, Voyager can escape. The sensor info from the Ethereans shows that there is Isodesium nearby. Unfortunately, it's located here. <laughs> because he was trash? <laughs> the scavenger's base of operations. These are the scavengers. A loose alliance he kind of was, yeah. That's not Chakotay's fault, alright? Chakotay could have been a better character. Like their attack on Voyager earlier. The Isodesium was most likely stolen from other ships. Looks like they used some of it, but most of it is scattered around their base. They probably don't know of its energy potential. It's imperative that we get the Isodesium... Chakotay's more interesting in the stuff that we don't see in the show. You know, like when he was a leader of the Maquis or doing other stuff. has in store for us. Sensors show hundreds of scavengers on that base. All races we're familiar with. Tries to make him a cyber. Human, Malon, and Hiroji. We're a bit outnumbered here, so we've opted for stealth infiltration and retrieval operation. I didn't think that romance was necessary. The romance with him in seven and nine made more sense. Five will be shuttled to the base by Ensign Paris. Once there, Ken and I will set up an extraction plan. Monroe, Telsia, and Odell will split up and retrieve three samples of- I'll say more after this cutscene. When you're done, you will make your way back to the extraction point. That's it, people. Now get prepped and report to the shuttle bay. Good luck, team. Okay, so well, another great episode is the one where Ensign Paris goes, like, past warp 10 or whatever, and he becomes, like, a space seal, and then- and then he kidnaps Chainway, and then they have a bunch of space children, <laughs> and like they're evolved humans. They're just salamanders. <laughs> what the fuck was that? That's got to be the dumbest episode of Voyager, and that's saying a lot. That's remember the episode where Neelix loses his lungs? <laughs> like, oh my, yeah, they had like three babies. How are they gonna make? So there's some place in the Delta Quadrant where there are these super evolved humans. <laughs> that are salamanders, and there's only three of them? Wow, that one was just, that one was pretty fucked up, man. Oh. Yeah, I don't think that's the main timeline. I think that timeline changes uh, the one where, like, Chakotay marries Seven and Nine. Okay, but here's the problem with Chakotay. Chakotay is actually an interesting character when you listen to, like, the stuff J Jakote represents, you know, because he's basically supposed to be the other captain that the Maquis look up to. But we don't really get to see that too much. And Jakote's biggest problem is they hired a guy. Uh, when they were writing the show, they hired a Native American expert to to uh, make Chakotay more authentic. But here's the thing. It turns out that Native American expert was complete bullshit. Like, everything they said was total horseshit. It was not, like, at all Native American culture. So it's just made up shit. <laughs> like that episode where Janeway finds her spirit animal. Oh my god, that, that is cringe. Seven episodes of Dawson's Creek, right? Just like, I need, like, there's all this crap going on, but I need to know what my spirit animal is. Oh, it's probably just a penguin. It tells you to slide. Sarah Silverman's in a cut in two episodes of Voyager. Those aren't bad. Those, those are all right. As far as like back in the past episodes go. Yes, sir. Oh, hey, Engineer Weir is still here. I guess he would be. But yeah, that's what I feel like Chakotay, he, he had potential, but then they just sort of like... Yeah, the shadows are buggy as hell. I can't turn off the shadows, man. And the Kazon. I hate the Kazon. I think they're like a budget version of Kleong's. They're also a race too stupid to live. Which, you know what, at the time, I thought they were that stupid. What? Really? You guys are talking yeah. some fucked up shit over here. They got so pointy. Trust me, try it. Tuvok will have an all new respect for you. <laughs> Nog play the young case on. Oh yeah, that was a Chicote episode too. <laughs> it's just this weird part of space where shadows don't conform to geometry. I mean, look at this. It's good. Also, shadows are just hard shadows. There's no soft shadows. They're all just total. <laughs> Oh, man.
Oh yeah, the Rock episode where he fights seven to nine in the arena. That one's pretty good. How about the Jason Alexander episode where he just plays George from Seinfeld and he just shows up? Voyager, or how about the Andy Dick episode, huh? Where like the doctor and Andy Dick <laughs> are in the USS Prometheus and they gotta stop the Romulans. <laughs> Action. All right, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you which guy's gonna win this card game here. Fine by me. Who knows what they'll find over there? Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Uh huh. Uh, I'm not doing. Are is it one only? Wait, are only two of you playing cards? You both have garbage hands. Oh wait. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm gonna zoom in here. Four cards, huh? Nothing. What about you? You got. It. Why did you put that? You already have an ace! Why would- How do you have two ace of spades? <laughs> Everyone has the same cards! <laughs> they have done- they have <laughs> Oh my god. They couldn't be bothered to make other textures. Man, <laughs> they're all cheating. That makes it fair. All right, what am I doing? Go to the equipment room. Oh, okay. Go to the shuttle bay. All right. Chakotay's just here being a manager. It's like, I gotta make sure you guys uh, don't slack. Where's the equipment room again? Oh, it's over here. What's up, Chakotay? Oh, he's got a new gun for me. What? Grenade launcher, sure. What's up, Paul Busting Pace? Commander Tuvok! Uh, that's the other problem, too. Like, see, Chakotay's character kind of gets overshadowed by Tuvok as well. Similar to how, like, Diana Troy, like, her character gets overshadowed by Whoopi Goldberg's character, Guinan. Because when you kind of think about it, like, Guinan just completely erases Troy as a character. Because Troy is not ne needed anymore. Because if we need to know something about something, we just go ask Guinan. Deck 10, Shuttle Bay. Who's somehow also living in the Nexus? Which, by the way, I can complain about the Star Trek Generations movie and how I kind of think it sucks. For a movie that's supposed to have both Kirk and Picard in it, for such hype, it was like, the reasoning behind having them together was just kind of stupid. Kind of like Star Trek Nemesis, like why should I care that Picard got cloned? It's not like he has superpowers. Hey, Monroe, they're waiting. Like what makes Picard Picard is his experiences. It would have been way better if it was like Mirror Universe Picard, because then it would be, oh hey look it's a Delta Quadrant. It's a Delta Flyer! That's the one Paris made. Where he became a space salamander. I'm glad that our elevators have this little thing here in case we fall off. No. That's more safety than the Empire has in Star Wars. You see how they work? Yeah, but tur yeah, because turbo lifts go up, down, left, right. They go everywhere. They're not just fancy elevators. It's just, yeah, a big Romulan evil. Well, what makes Nemesis bad in, in multiple ways, even though I love the space battle at the end, I think that one's cool. But what makes it bad is like, they introduce that the Remen for the Romulans, which are never talked about at all up until that point. It's kind of like Star Trek V, when it's like, oh, Spock has a brother? Which, by the way, what about Spock's brother in Star Trek Discovery? We get to see his sister, What? where's his brother? I mean, it makes, like, when you think about it, too, that also explains why why Spock has a sister that he never talks about at all in the original show. Because he never talked about his brother in Star Trek V. Like, Kirk asked him, like, you never, or Bones, he's like, you never told us you had a brother, and he's like, you never asked. He's like, of course, we had to ask you if you had family. I mean, that also is a, is a throwback to the episode where Spock's father and mother show up in the original show, and, uh... He doesn't mention that that's his mother and father until, like... Oh, well, you're dead. 
Are you doing all right there? You okay? Having fun? Mm -hmm. Man, you're really spazzing out. I, I could help you, but I'm just gonna see if this barrel runs you over. You having sex with your shadow? Oh, God! Oh, they'll be fine. Oh, well, oops. Nothing I could have done. You all saw that. There was nothing. There was no time. Ruptured. Oh, crap. <laughs> Man, <laughs> could you imagine, like... <laughs> having, like, reaction times that badly? <laughs> Ship's full of assholes. How many assholes are on this ship? <laughs> oh my god, keep firing, assholes! <laughs> right, look, there's really nothing I can do to save this guy. It's not like I can even stop the barrel. Oh, I can. Oh no, wait. No, I can't. Uh, well... Oh! Serotonin gas. It's got to be over 500 degrees. I don't think even your hazard suit can protect you from that kind of thing. Crewman. Sorry, don't have time for chit chat. Yeah, I could have just let you die. Trust me, in another reality that happened. <laughs> he just dies, is what happens if I. <laughs> Alright, so what am I supposed to do then? Am I supposed to, like. Jump around this crap? Like, I don't know. There, we'll just blow stuff up. They never developed railings and they changed- Yeah, that's what- that's what did it. Okay, alright. There's a little- little alcove up here. Like a Jeffrey's. Aha! Talking clamps. I did it. Good work, Monroe. Good. Get back up here, Monroe. Let's get this show on the road. A ladder? No. All right. Fine. But do we need railings when there's a wall? Tom Paris at your service. I will be your captain for this flight. Hey, you look just like some other guy that got in a penal colony on Next Gen, but you're not the same guy. But you look just like him. Captain, we're all set here. Okay, all aboard. This is good. Well, the other problem is they're not using the Star Trek music. They're using like their own remixed version of the Star Trek music. See, now I'm just picturing, like, a Rob Zombie music video going on that they're watching. Yet I am the Wonder Man eating set! And, like, with, like, the Rob Zombie robots and stuff. Hey, those Captain Proton episodes of Voyager aren't bad. <laughs> it's City Radio. <laughs> Oh look, they got like a bird of prey, they got like an old constitution class. Like this is just a whole bunch of ships like fused together. Oh, there we go, spacewalking. Uh, do I have my helmet on? Good, that's all I need. Good luck, gents. Meet you back at the homestead. Alright, this is a stealth mission. Avoid detection at all cost. However, if you do find yourself in a hostile engagement, Defend yourself by any means necessary. On route to airlock three. Right, on my way to airlock two. Remember the spacewalk in first contact? Whee! Well, in the cartoon, they were just bubbles. In the, in the original Star Trek cartoon, it's like, oh, we just got this bubble. And it's like, okay, sure. 
Kelsia checking in. I'm in position. Odell checking in. I'm through the third airlock. All right, team. We'll be using a. Oh, look, he's got his Google Glass. He's ready. Channel, but try to maintain calm silence unless absolutely necessary. When I give the signal, return here. We'll have pattern enhancers set up to beam us out. <laughs> so what I think happens is that magic pouch, pouch it, it's like, it's like replicator type tech. Yeah. So it's like they, they, they teleport it into okay. the pouch, we'll be able and then they teleport it out of the pouch. Here. We'll try to alert you to any dangers we can detect. There was a de you know, I think, oddly enough, the best spacewalking episode of Star Trek, at least in my opinion, is still that one in Enterprise where they go into the Romulan minefield. Careful. No running. Oh my god, a Cleon bridge! Stay quiet. Is he just sleeping at the bridge? What is he looking at? I don't know why it's always foggy on the cl Oh, what? The duck, duck, I don't, I got there you go. Okay, I got him. Just gotta speak their language. That's what impresses him. Oh, shit. Control panel. What's this gun? Oh, they gave me a grenade launcher for my stealth mission. So there's a Constitution class starship. Watch it. There's a couple of life signs just ahead. But I, the corner I don't out. think it's from our universe. Or the Prime Universe. Because there would be no Constitution class star vessels or starships in use. What's going on now? Ah, fuck it, just kill them all! Fuck you and your stealth mission! Yeah, it's like, you gave me a grenade launcher, you know that, right? Like, you gave me one of these. You know, I'm not supposed to use it? What's secondary? Oh, it's a mine. A sleeping Kleongs. What a stereotype game. Come on. <laughs> nice. Odell checking in, sir. Oh, it's just Cleong ships. They like this lighting. I don't. They don't have to look at each other. I guess it's it's also because these are scavengers, so their their ships aren't really like powered. Their guns still float in the air, though. Like you know how it, how Star Trek Six. What do you guys think? Cleong's uh, purple blood or red blood? That's always been a thing, right? Like, it looks like in Discovery they're going with that Pepto Bismol blood. Which I guess is how it's supposed to be. This is a stealth mission! This oh damn it. Oh look, they, they keep their food alive, you know. I was gonna stealth it up. What is this? Nice. Any health? Looks like oh my god! It looks like one of these things I can like dump on and get up there because it's copper based. Oh, so what? What are Cleon? Why is Cleon blood purple? Ah, oh, there we go. Physics puzzles. <laughs> Before there was proper physics. Why is Vulcan blood green? I guess because they're just goblins. They're just evolved goblins. I don't need that. Get out my stealth weapon here. You know, in the first episodes of Star Trek, the original show, uh, Spock had emotions. I actually really like those first episodes, the ones with Captain Pike, you know, when the, when the budget was like twice, twice as much as the actual show. 
Because that's what happened. They filmed like three episodes, and then the network was like, okay, um, you're going to have to cut the budget because th this show is costing way too much. And uh, you're going to have, like, they gave them all these things that they had to do, which is why afterwards the show kind of gets, like, more formulaic. But if you watch those first three shows, it's a lot like Next Generation. Because Captain Pike has a first officer that he calls number one. The uh, relationship between him and the Doctor is very similar to what we see in Wrath of Khan with Kirk and Bones. Yeah, no emotions for Spock. Like, we can't have him smile. But that also plays into the next episode that we see Captain Pike in, which I think is the Menagerie. Which is, you know, that's the one where we see what happens to Captain Pike, where he, he shows up and he's in that, like, wheelchair and he can only speak in beeps, you know, like, two beeps for yes and one beep for no. And that's when Spock takes over the ship and kidnaps Captain Pike to take him back to that planet. Hey, what's up, guys? So it's like, people can say Spock has no emotions or whatever, but, like, Spock saved Captain Pike. Like, he couldn't bear to see Captain Pike the way he was. So that's why he took him to that planet. Bleepy chairs for the court. Oh yeah, because it starts off with Fry in the bleepy chair. So we have to assume something bad happened, but no, they just use that bleepy chair for the courtroom scene. Which is what happens in the Star Trek episode. It is a courtroom scene... I forget why they're in the courtroom. I think Spock does something, but I know Spock does kidnap Pike. Against Pike's wishes, by the way. And then he sends him to that planet. It's a forbidden planet. There's like 14 or so forbidden planets in the Federation. Where they erase all the history of, of them ever visiting the planet. And they make the planet off limits. Like, in other words, you're never supposed to go there. And usually the reason is there's something there, you know, like there's either an alien race that doesn't want visitors or there's something there that's like extremely dangerous. Roberto Stappings. I think the Nazi world, because there's the Nazi world, there's the gangster, 1920s gangster world, and then there's like a Roman world, right? I think those aren't forbidden planets. I think they can go to those. Those are just really... Those are failed human colonies, which... At the time, I thought was stupid, but now with the birth of the internet, it's like, yeah, I can see a bunch of people just going in there and making Roman and Nazi world. Be like, screw you, we're gonna have our own stupid human colony. You know what? The Roman... They, they knew what was up. Or 1920s gangsters, they clearly knew what was going on. They're basically just cult planets. Right, I'm, go I'm, going I'm going back for health, that's why I'm backtracking. Okay. There we go, it's this room. I think there was like a health station up here that I didn't use. Um... Uh, Miri? That's the one where all the adults are dead, right? Like some virus killed all the adults on the planet? Hey, you know what's a good one? The Doomsday Weapon one. That one's pretty sweet. So is Balance of Terror, the one where, where we see the first Romulans, played by Andres Katsulas, also from Babylon 5. Who would later on show up in Next Gen, and he would play, uh, spoilers, or get this, a Romulan. I know, shocker, right? They got Andres Katsulas to come back to be a Romulan again. Just like how they get Armin Shimmerman to come back to play a Ferengi every now and then. See you checking in, sir. Go ahead. I found a sample of the Isodesium. Sir, this area looks like a Federation ship. Early 23rd century. But I don't recognize these markings. It's it's this obviously the Terran Empire. Expedition. Just get the samples and get out. Oh, that's Roger, right. Sir. The Does mirror universe is classified. No one in Starfleet knows about the mirror universe. The what Kirk did. When he went into the mirror universe, all of that is classified. What happened in Star Trek Discovery, all of that is classified. None of that is like common knowledge. So basically people in Star Trek do not know 
about the mirror universe. Telsia? Wait, wait, who is Telsia? They all know in Discovery, but that's because they went to the mirror universe. But their shit is classified, so no one else knows outside of the guys in Discovery that were on the on, on Discovery. But then, okay, all right. So there's two episodes of Star Trek Enterprise that takes place. Oh no, she didn't. She didn't die. Apparently, those aliens were like weird eternal aliens, and so she didn't get like vaporized. She got put into stasis. Also, all those aliens I killed on that ship also got put into stasis, so I didn't kill anybody. Apparently. So no, she's still alive. That was in a cutscene where it's like, I'm assuming the volume on the game is too low. I'll fix that next time I stream it, but I can't tell until I, like, watch the replay. Okay, so what was I? I was trying to make sense of the mirror universe. All right, so like, there's those two episodes of Enterprise, but as far as I know, those are self-contained mirror universe episodes. So the first time the crossover happens is Discovery, and then the second time is Kirk with the transporter accident, and that's why Kirk has no idea about the mirror universe because he was never briefed on the mirror universe because that's you know need to know information. Only, you know, um, the Admiral and those in Discovery know about it. I think in Deep Space Nine, when they go to the Mirror Universe, I also think Cisco is not aware of what the Mirror Universe is either. I could be wrong, it's been a long time since I watched Mirror Mirror. They even mentioned that in Discovery, that it's like, now we can't tell anyone, anyone what happened there. It's totally classified. Which is why, what's her face, um, that captain that shows back up, they can't say she's from the Mirror Universe. They have to say that she somehow survived the Kleong attack. And that she is, um, uh, Phil Philippa Giorgio. So she takes over the persona of Giorgio. Which I think is like, man, Starfleet, we're that, we're that desperate? And then I guess they put her in Section 31, because why not? Man, did you hear that scream? Damn. What, wait, what's going on in here? Oh, oh, that's just snoring. Sounds like Galron over there is just like snoring the whole time. Hey, you know what? I think Galron got done dirty in Deep Space Nine. Like he was, he was so cool in Next Gen. He just kind of has like a weird character turn all of a sudden, and then Worf just kills him. I like these view screens here that are three-dimensional. <laughs> All right, well, we're done there, I guess. Hopefully that, op I guess it opened the door. Monroe, what's your status? Just that I got the stuff. Roger, foster out. But yeah, spoilers, that, that Constitution class star vessel, starship, uh, that's a Mirror Universe ship. Terran Empire. Well, it's also kind of crazy how powerful the, the handheld weapons are, too, because, like, if you set a phaser on overload, you can blow up half the ship. Well, supposedly disruptors are painful. You remember that episode where Data gets uh, taken by that collector? You know, they fake his death, and then that guy, like, um, takes Data. And, like, Data, at the end of the episode, basically, Data was gonna kill him. Like, they teleport him out of there before Data kills the guy. What is it? I don't know. Bones? 
Wait, I think I'm being followed. I'll check in later. Odell out. What you saw? You saw the doctor? Yeah, it's a very painful way to die. Which I'm like, so that's different from when I use a phaser at full and completely disintegrate him as well. Because that collector guy's like, yeah, I got this like, this disruptor, you know. It's... And then Data was gonna use it on him at the end. He just got teleported out, like, right, almost as soon as he pressed the button. You feel nothing? Mm. That's, that's the Federation in a nutshell, isn't it? It's like, we'll kill you, but we'll be nice about it. <laughs> I got my health. Good to go. So, I'm assuming there's like multiple ways to do this mission. Like, maybe I can go through here. Oh, no, wait. I have to go through here to get that. What happened? I don't know. Check the terminals. Although, when I do that, it turns off. Um... Tell us to Monroe. Monroe here. I need a diversion. This area is heavily guarded. Oh, we'll just shoot him. That's what I do. See, look. Oh, Ken here. Look, throw the grenades at him. Engineering section. There should be a power transfer console on the top level. Roger, I'm on it. Adam by Adam. I think it is the collector episode. You'll know it when you see it. Oh. They're only banned in the Federation. That doesn't mean that, like, because because Cleons use them, and so does uh, Romulans. And as we know, with the Federation. You know, they, 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 they like poo-poo on that, but at the end of the day, when they need help, they, they will get the Kleongs and the Romulans to join an alliance, even though the Kleongs have slavery and subjugate people, and so do the Romulans. But hey, after the Dominion War, it's like, hey, we're all good buddies now, right? Look at this control panel. Monroe. The their warp core. Now it's almost like the Federation is just full of hypocrites. They'll be in bed with anybody. But then again, I mean, like, you know, uh, when growing up in Star Trek, oh my God, I fell off the thing. In Star Trek, like, it was always represented, like, in TNG as well as TOS, that the Federation was like, oh, they were they were this benevolent group that was throughout the galaxy and not warlike or whatever. But when looking at their actual history, the Federation has always been warlike. They were founded on war. They were founded uh, to stop the Romulan threat, the Andorians, Tellarites, Vulcans, and humans, right? Those are the four founding members of the Federation. Their military fleet in the Cleon War, they're always at war is the thing like that's like even in the the so-called golden era of next gen that was that big peaceful era you know there was still that the romulan thing that happened with the Kleongs at kittimer why did you divert our power we did not our whole section is on emergency lights bah so much the better now you won't have to see each other's repugnant faces <laughs> we're not leaving until you return power to our sector this Patak must be hallucinating. I know what You spell Patak with a capital Q? And what are you going to do about it? We outnumber you two to one. Ha! It would take 20 Malon to equal one Klingon warrior. It is we who outnumber you two to one. That would be ten to one, Klingon wench. Stop! He might be telling the truth. Let's check it out. We're not leaving it. Damn it. Restore power. What's a Malon? I guess I tried to explain it. There's probably is something introduced in this game that I don't give a crap about. At least it's not Packlids, am I right? Oh my god. Could you imagine if it was like a Packlid? God, that would suck. Man, I wish I didn't use all my grenades. This is like perfect for grenades.
But like, even in the TNG timeline where they got really complacent... Hey, a scavenger rifle, what is that like? Oh, is it just this? Okay. Like, you know, um... We, there was the Borg. And, and like, a lot of the stuff used in the Dominion War was made to fight the Borg. I mean, the Defiant was primarily designed to fight the Borg, not, not to fight the Dominion at all. Because the Dominion didn't exist when they were designing it. The Sovereign was also a, like, ship prototype to fight the Borg. Which, you know, that design would later on become the Enterprise-E. The Borg was, like, the, the problem with the Borg is that that first time they beat them shows how easy it is to beat them. All you gotta do is hack into their network. Because they have no security system at all. They have no firewalls, nothing. So once you compromise their network, they're screwed. And that network is always open. Like, you just need to get one Borg drone and compromise them. And then they're just, they're, they're fucked. They can't do anything. They don't know what to do. They got no defenses against that. I have the last sample of Isodesium. I'm on my way back. Hold on, Monroe. Odell hasn't reported back yet. We can't get any response from him. Can you go check it out? Yeah. I'm right by the entrance to the Malon area. Good. See if you can find Odell. But be careful. I don't want to find Foster Ordell. Out. Look, we, he's an acceptable loss. Monroe to Ken. There's a security door at the Malon entrance. Roger. I'll see if I can override it from here. Oh, it's all drippy here. Get it, the whole colony and the hive can die. Yeah, it's the problem with the Borg right there. It's kind of why they're sort of a, a non entity. Like after Voyager. Hold on. Voyager did introduce some interesting bad guys, like the Herogen. The Herogen are basically the predator from, from you know, uh, Predator. <laughs> In terms of their culture, not really in terms of the way they look or how they fight. Because I, I remember I used to, like, talk to these people that didn't want to watch Deep Space Nine or Voyager because they, they thought, well, how can you top the Borg? And I'm like, I hate to say this, but the Borg were not that much of a threat. Like, they were definitely a threat, like, especially in the first episode they show up with when Q throws the Enterprise at him. But... When you think about it, it's like, compared to like, say, I don't know, the Dominion, I don't think the Borg is that, that big of a threat. Or, uh, or the Big Bad in, what's it called, uh, Voyager with Species 8472. Which I actually kind of like the introduction of that, because that also explains why the Borg don't just flat out invade Earth. Because they're, they've been fighting this other battle. Yeah, the Borg are like, they're like a hurricane or a force of nature. They're not really an empire or an entity. They're like a random event or a mega event in like, you know, Masters of Orion or like Galactic Civilization, like any of those Space 4X games. Now, I think the plot of the game Star Trek Legacy, which is a game that contains all the captains. Mongol? Mongol is censored now? Really? Can someone allow that, that message? I can't alt-tab out of the game. No, the Borg have no plans at all. Thank you, Never Conquer. Yeah, I can't alt tab out of this game, so I can't do anything to the chat. But apparently Mongol was censored. They block... It really offends... 
offends people to this day talking about the Mongol invasion. <laughs> okay, well that's fine, never mind. People just get triggered about that, you know. I mean, I know, I know, Twitch's auto mod stuff goes a little too far, but remember the remember the dark days when it didn't when it wasn't there. Oh my god. Like, I mean, there's still, like, trolls and stuff like that, but, like, man, when, before, like, Twitch and other social media was cracking down on stuff like that, it was like the Wild West. Oh, this is, okay. Valve, Valve does nothing. Am I supposed to go down there? I guess so. Yeah, there's not. Oh, here we go. Now I go down there? Well, I guess this is a good spot to end the stream, since I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Also, I gotta go to work in about 30 minutes. Ooh, ooh. Even though I'm a little tired, maybe I'll take like a 20 minute nap. But thanks everyone for being here, thanks for joining me while I played some Elite Force. They use secret agents and infiltrate societies. But that's what the Founders are capable of doing! Or, the, or that Zerg race. See, that's- that's how you can use- that's why the- that's why the Dominion's scary, man. They got the Shape Changers. Or the Changelings. Yeah, thank you, Kirk Coolbeans. Thanks, Silent Chain, Ball Busting Babe, Never Conquer, Nocturne. Thank, thanks, you guys, for being here. I showed this at the beginning of the stream, but I guess I'll show it now, because now I can- I can do this. And thank you, Bard Zerker, but, like... Oh, yeah, I see you can do all this. You can look at the stuff on the ship. Logging off Not Star Trek related, but I found this at work. So I'm gonna show it off, because I bought it. Because why not? So... Apparently, Hot Wheels is selling the 1987 Turtles van. Like, look at the, like, that's the 1987, like, party wagon. So I was like, really? So, okay, so they're making a 1987's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game. And now they're, like, releasing, like, the old school turtle van. I'm kind of thinking that maybe they're going to actually do, a, like, either a reboot of 87 Turtles, like an actual show... Or something's happening. It's like, why does this exist? You're like, this is brand new. There's no reason to make a 1987's turtle van. At all. Like, it's got the door. It's got the detail on the front with the face and everything like that. Like, so I'm thinking, yeah, we need to get those green turtle pies to come out as well. Also, the artwork is the 87 turtles, too. So, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, like, there's something going on here. Some kind of throwback. Because this... This isn't just like a random marketing thing, but we'll see what happens. But thanks everyone for being here, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, everyone. Oh, and check out the YouTube. I posted like two more guitar videos or playthroughs going on with that. Check that, check that stuff out. All right, guys, have a good one.